After years of hosting a video game podcast, I've gotten back into game collecting. I couldn't fight that feeling anymore, as the kids say. And I love shopping for old games. Looking at them in the glass displays, asking the staff to come unlock the case so I can get my hands on them. It's fun shopping for old games. But to go through that exact same process to get a razor blade is ridiculous. That's why I don't. I get mine delivered by Harry's. Visit harrys.com slash RTG and get a $3 starter set to see what I'm talking about. Harry saw that trying to buy razor blades was the same experience as trying to buy a copy of Earthbound and said, this is ridiculous. So they started making razor blades as good as Earthbound, but made them 10 times easier and about a thousand times less expensive to buy. I've said it before and I'll keep saying it. I'm a Harry's guy. I've been shaving with their blades for over 10 years and I can't think of a single thing I don't like about them. They feel good. They look classy. Their lotions and shaving gels smell awesome and they're more affordable than the junk at the store. I rock a beard these days, but I still keep the back and edges crisp and on point and it's hella easy with Harry's razor blades. You're not a junior high kid with peach fuzz anymore. Don't shave like one. Let them buy the plastic crap at the store and get your stuff through Harry's. Your grandpa would be proud. Harry's blades are German engineered and they have the highest customer satisfaction rating in the industry for a reason. Everything you need for a top shelf shave delivered to your door at lower prices than the stuff at the store. It leaves you extra money and time that you can spend on video games. And they do that thing I like. Money back guarantee. Give Harry's a shot. If you're not happy, it's on them. It's probably very easy to offer that when you know your product is legit. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It is my retro gaming podcast where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and we geek out about the games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blake. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And this week it is episode 301. And to kick off the climb to episode 400, we're going to cover the game that might not be the most requested in show history by the entire community, but it's easily the most requested in show history by a single person. And that is Little Nemo the Dream Master for the NES. Now, I played this one a little bit back when I was a kid. I remember renting it once or twice after seeing it in one of my magazines and thinking it looked awesome and then firing it up. And I and I really loved the concept, but I found it pretty tough. If you've never played it, uh, you play as this kid and each level is one of his dreams, I assume. Uh, it's a platformer and all you can really do is jump and throw candy. But you throw the candy into the various animals' mouths and then eventually it kills them or puts them to sleep or something. And then you can ride them or in some cases wear their fucking skin and you get their abilities. It's it's a lot more morbid when I, <laughs> when I describe it like that. I, as a kid, I saw that like, oh my god, I'm just a kid going around feeding candy to animals and then riding them? That sounds adorable. But then you realize the candy might be killing them and then you get to wear their skin. Uh, but you also get their abilities. Uh, with As is, you know, if you put on anyone's skin, you get their abilities. So kill me, put my skin on, and you suddenly have no depth perception and be an okay public speaker. It's, it's fucked up. Anyways, uh, you go through each level looking for keys, and then you have to find enough to unlock a door at the end. And then it's rinse and repeat until you get to the final level, get a magic wand, and fight some bosses. Um, well, it's become a bit of a joke around Remember the Game now over the years that I would never cover. Little Nemo the Dream Master. It's honestly been on my someday pile for quite a while now. Because I really do have fond memories of it from when I was a kid. I enjoy most of Capcom's work. And this is one of their NES games. So I've got faith in the developer. And at the end of the day, like I mentioned, there's one little boy who has been asking for this episode as often as Bart asked for his spy camera. Shout out to when he gets that reference. So we're going to dive into the world of Little Nemo and the dreams he apparently masters this week. Tough little game, but it's beatable. It's charming and it's not that long and we'll get there in just a minute because speaking of being charming and not that long it's time for another edition of remember the game's infamous intro dun, 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 dun. 
And if you're new to the podcast, welcome aboard and consider this your warning. I lied. Our intros are kind of long. They're not that long. They're medium long, but they're fun. And uh, you don't have to wear any animal skin to get past them. Uh, if you do want to skip them, go to about the 30 minute mark. We'll be in a little Nemo talk. But I recommend listening because we're going to talk video games and stuff. It's a good time. I do have to get my quick plugs out of the way. Let me keep my bills on. Uh, we are running a merch sale until the end of July to celebrate 300 episodes. You can save 20% on hoodies, t-shirts, posters, all kinds of stuff at rememberthegamepodcast.com with promo code MOLLY300. Uh, and shout out to my man Joe from 4545 Creative for designing all that merch that's currently on sale. And of course, if you don't like clothes, I get it. You could always consider supporting us on Patreon. Uh, you get up yourself up to four ad-free podcasts each week over there, including our Simpsons podcast, Purple Monkey Dishwasher, my vlogging podcast, The Rambling Idiot, my gaming news podcast, Game Patch, and my second video game podcast. It's a bit of a video game potpourri in Expansion Pass. That one, we do rankings. We look back at characters and consoles. We do some comedy episodes. There's a whole buttload of modern game reviews this past week was expansion pass 217 and it one of it was one of it was easy for me to say it was one of our uber popular draft episodes now normally the the guys come in and they draft games from a specific console we've done the nes the super nintendo the genesis but for this one the four gents that have appeared on remember the game the most over the years chris mark McHugh, tyler and bradley McHugh, each had to build a game library using only the game we covered on the first 300 remember the games and as is becoming tradition here is a sneak peek of last week's episode of expansion pass the remember the game draft and uh we're off to the races so these guys are drafting from every game and movie that we have covered on remember the game through the first 300 episodes of the show. I've heard your feedback. We've got a bunch of categories they need to fill well now, in addition to the three wildcard spots. This could get interesting. Chris, you've got the very first pick. What game are you taking? What category or slot are you slotting that game into? It's going to go into wildcard one. It needs no introduction. It's the gold standard of its species. It's a legend of Zelda, a link to the past. I like it. I was so for the record, Darn I have strong. Yeah, I have decided that I have not classified Zelda as an RPG. Is that a hot take? It is a little bit of a hot take, not gonna lie. But like, I think, what, I think, what, I think what the, isn't an RPG now? I think that those are more like fantasy action games, whereas the newer Zelda games, like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, those are, feel RPG. Right to me. Yeah, I just like I, I fucking like when I was doing the blankies this year. I'm like, I don't even know what the fucking RPG is anymore. So I was like, we we have a lot of bona fide RPGs. I thought I'd just throw Zelda out there. And as I said in the in the peak past the podcast, the guys are not allowed to take a second game from a franchise. So Chris is Zelda'd out with his first overall pick. Good start. Link to the past. Bradley, you've got the second pick. Where are you putting your game? What are you taking? And did you want Link to the Past? So that's now available in our archives. And this week for Expansion Pass 218, I don't know what we're talking about yet. The Patreons get to vote on the final topic of Expansion Pass each month. The poll is live right now. It looks like it's either going to be me helping people pick what to play next from their backlogs or me counting down the 10 Sega Saturn games I'd play if I had to play the Sega Saturn. So one of those will be available tomorrow for Patreons. Again, subscriptions start at 3 bucks a month. You get new shows every week. They're all ad-free. You get instant access to literally hundreds of additional archived ad-free podcasts. Plus, You can join the Remember the Game Discord. You get a chance to vote in our polls every month. You get the ability to submit comments from our shows. You get DM with me. I actually check those DMs, so I'll probably reply to you. And you even get a shout-out and get to hear me mispronounce your name like I'm about to do to most of these people. A huge thank you to our newest Patreons, Greg Roop. Mustang 5, William Kirby, Travis Sanders, STFC, Jeff Horn, Raul VP, And Majora 6978. Nice. Uh, Thank you all so much for the support and welcome to Remember the Game Industries. Patreon.com slash Remember the Game. And to wrap up the sales pitch, don't forget we donate 5% of our income over there to charity every every year. Excuse me. And you can sign up for an annual subscription that'll save you your 12th month's fees. And don't forget, you can also find me over on Twitch whenever I have time to get over there. Twitch.tv slash Remember the Game. Or pardon me, slash Remember the Game. Not Remember. Fuck them. Remember the Games. Come by and say hi. 
That's enough blowing myself. Let's blow some of you by blowing in some cartridges. It is our opening segment here on the show. I read a few comments and questions from our Patriots, usually gaming related, but not always. And we call this segment Blowing in the Cartridge. He blows all right. He blows big time. That's it, honey. Get into the spirit. (laughs) Let's blow. Our first blower this week is Amazon Cheese Merchant. Nice pull who said, Ahoy hoy, Adam. I hope you had a nice holiday and I hope you're enjoying the weather up in Canada land. Do you use any Do you use any affinity for the Oilers? I think you mean do you have any affinity for the Oilers? I live in Florida, but I'm pulling for Edmonton for a couple of big reasons. I guess we'll know who won by Wednesday. Yes, if you don't know, I'm recording this the afternoon of Monday, June 24th, and Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals starts in about 90 minutes from the time I'm sitting here. Uh, because people keep asking me, I actually don't hate the Oilers team, but I'm not cheering for them because I'm not an Oilers fan. I'm a Montreal fan living in Edmonton, surrounded by Edmonton fans who never shut the fuck up. And I know some of you are nice. I'm sure Montreal fans are obnoxious as fuck too. Every fan base that's passionate is annoying as shit when you're not part of it. So I am cheering for the Panthers. I don't know. I don't know who's going to... I have money on the Panthers tonight. I think Florida and six before the series started, but now I don't fucking know. Either way, for everyone that's been asking, this city is pandemonium right now, and win or lose tonight, uh, the city is going to burn to the fucking ground. So I hope everyone... I hope by the time this episode goes live, everybody sat down and enjoyed Game 7, because even if you're not a hockey fan, Game 7 of anything is fire. I've watched basketball when it's Game 7, and I can't stand basketball. It's the best thing in sports. The two sweetest words in sports. Game seven. Go Panthers. Ace McGuy said, since we'll apparently never get it in North America, and I know you've played it, could you please do a remember the game or expansion pass on Mother 3? It drives me crazy that they keep putting that kid in Smash, but no one in the West can even play that fucking game. Legally. Yes, legally, you can't play Mother 3. But illegally... You can get your hands on it. I do have a copy of it. The English translated card. A buddy of mine got it for me for my birthday. Uh, Yes. Once in a while, this comes up. I lent it out to a friend of mine. I know he's listening. I need to get it back so that I can replay it uh, to do an episode about it on RTG. But yes, eventually, I think it's safe to say we will cover Remember the Mother 3 on Remember the Game. Because I quite, not as good as Earthbound, but I like that game. Uh, the Archmage said, I just recently got a steamer and it's awesome. I wanted to ask what games you're playing on it or what you recommend. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Congratulations. If you don't know, the steamer is the code name for the steam deck here at remember the game. Uh, I do have one. It is awesome. As everyone knows, I'm not a PC guy, but having a handheld console, I can play those games on is fire. Uh, as far as what I'm playing on it, I've been playing cyberpunk on it for like two months. And outside of the fact that it inhales the battery in about 90 minutes, Uh, Cyberpunk runs fucking awesome on it. So I definitely recommend that. I'd also recommend Red Dead Redemption 2. I've only played a few hours of it, but it runs awesome on there as well. So it's a great way to play some of these giant games. Like the Fallouts are on there. The Witchers are on there. The Elder Scrolls are on there. It's a great way to play these big open world games on a handheld that the Switch, uh, you know, games that won't run on the Switch. Uh, And then also... I know Witcher 3 is on the Switch for everybody, right? I know. That's actually where I played it was on the Switch. But I'm sure it's better on a steamer. Other than that, I really like it for indies. And I really like it for RPGs. Like, I've played Have a Nice Death on there. Uh, Have a Nice Death actually was great on there. Uh, I've played a lot of the Steam World games on there. Uh, I have Final Fantasy IX on there that I'm actually going to be firing up right away to get ready for an upcoming revisited episode of RTG. Huh? Uh, not Probably not for a while. Don't. It's not coming in the next couple of weeks, but eventually. Um, yeah, dude, it's got so many games, but that honestly, my biggest pick is cyberpunk. Oh, and WWE dude, WWE 2k 23. I'm assuming 24 does as well. 2k 23 ran awesome on there. It was fucking sick to be able to play WWE anywhere. Steamer's sick. I'm, I'm a big supporter of the steam deck. That thing is awesome. Uh, congrats on the pickup, buddy. James Giggy said, with this last Nintendo Direct, I'm going more and more worried for the new Switch. I just can't see how I will not be let down. In my personal opinion, the Switch is the greatest console of all time, and it's not even close. So the thing is, if they keep giving me gold, I don't even want a new Switch because I can't foresee anything better than the Switch 1, and it would be a $350 letdown. Uh, I actually, look, the Super Nintendo is my favorite console of all time, but if you were to put a gun to my head and say, what's your favorite system of all time, the, the Switch is is replacing it, I think, because I've got a lot of my favorite Super Nintendo games on it, plus so many bangers, and I know haters are going to hate on the Switch. Uh, I am a Nintendo fanboy. I've never hidden that, but I, I truly think the Switch is just a fucking superb piece of hardware. I'm also very nervous 
about the Switch 2, the Super Switch, the Switch successor, whatever the fuck they end up calling it, because Nintendo does have a tendency to get in their own way and do something crazy, but they're sitting on what could very well end up being the greatest selling console of all time, so I'm going to hold out hope and have faith that the gaming gods will steer them in the right direction, and all they'll do is release a more powerful Switch, because I think at the end, that's what a lot of us want. Make it backwards compatible, have all my saves and everything transfer over, and then just give it more juice under the hood or whatever the fuck this term, more horses under the power whatever the fuck so that it can run more new games plus all my old games and then just release more new versions of the popular games that we've already played give us new zeldas new marios new mario karts all that kind of stuff i understand your concern james um uh all i want is a better switch i'm assuming based on your comments that's all you want as well and i'm hoping nintendo hears us and that's all they do i at this point i'm like i just i always get excited like i was excited when the ps5 got announced i was excited for the series everything i was excited for the switch i always get hype when a new console gets announced but i don't know if i've ever been as jacked for a new system as i am whatever nintendo is going to do next just because i'm so captivated to see if they do something stupid and i'm really hoping that they don't so just have faith have faith james have faith Sherdo94 said, Hi, Adam. Congrats on the big 300. Thank you. I recently listened to episode 200 where you talked Final Fantasy Tactics, and I'm really interested in the genre, but I have no experience whatsoever with it. Most websites have this game as their number one game from the genre, but you said yourself that this game is not very welcoming to new players. If you could recommend one tactical game to newcomers, what would it be? XCOM 2, Fire Emblem Three Houses. I'm a big Gears fan, so maybe Gears Tactics. I would love to hear your thoughts. Cheers. Uh, I, where I started was Fire Emblem Awakening. Now, the problem is that you need to have a 3D, if you, so if you have a 3DS, then I would recommend starting with Fire Emblem Awakening. You can get a used copy for about 50 bucks Canadian. It's not insane. And, uh, it's great. I think it's about 50 bucks Canadian. Don't quote me on that. But that's, uh, that's where I started. I think it's a great introduction. Fire Emblem Three Houses is really fucking good, but there is a lot of, like, community building and getting to know the characters and stuff, which I know may not tickle everybody's pickle i think xcom 2 is pretty complex oh you know what else is a great pick uh because i'm assuming you've got a switch if you mentioned fire emblem three houses uh super or mario and rabbits the first mario plus rabbits is a it's like mario xcom that is a great introduction gears tactics is pretty good as well um uh, or into the breach is another one that's really really good and that one's cheap that's an indie game that never ends that's another one of my favorites but Fire Emblem Awakening is where I started. I would, I mean, like you could probably start with Final Fantasy Tactics. There's just a lot to learn. That's all. And it can be pretty unforgiving. So, whereas the Fire Emblem games like turn off permadeath and stuff and they can be a little bit, a little bit softer. Uh, let me know where you go with though. I, I fucking love the genre. So good luck. Daniel Jordan said, hello, Mr. Blank. Greetings from the mythical, mystical kingdom of Ireland. Long time listener, first time blower. Since you're so good at voices, I would like you to attempt an Irish accent on the show. I'm 41 years old and I've never heard a North American in TV or movies do one that didn't sound like the leprechaun from the Lucky Charms commercials. If it pleases me, I may let you have my crock of gold. Uh, oof, this is going to be ugly. Keep up the good work. And how about reviewing a tenaciously Irish related game that's St. Patrick's Day? Admittedly, I can't think of any, but we have until March to think of one. See you in the funny pages, Dan. Dan, thank you for the support. Thank you for writing in. Much love to Ireland, even though I've never been there. I assume it's nice. It looks nice. Uh, I cannot do an Irish accent at all. All I'm going to do is a fucking impression of the leprechaun from the Lucky Charms commercial. And it's not even going to be good. So what I will do is I will... Oh, this is going to be fucking... I'm warning you all right now. I have no idea how to do an Irish accent. So this is going to be genuinely offensive and appalling to everybody. I'll read the next comment in your in the Irish accent to let you know how this is going to go. All right? Oh, boy. Mm. Devil's Cry 007 wrote in and said, Scale from 1 to 10, how often do people use their names as a bad pun? Drawing a blank, etc.? But no, seriously, episode... That sounds French. I can't do an Irish accent. Fuck you. Ireland is on double secret probation for humiliating me. Fuck you and your whole country and that stupid leprechaun and four-leaf clovers that aren't even that lucky and lucky charms that suck outside of the marshmallows and we don't know why you won't just sell them. And I know you're going to come back and say, it's because we don't own the cereal at some American fat cat company. Well, get over here with your beers and your fighting and get rid of them and take over the company and fix your cereal. Fuck you. I can't do an Irish accent. Devil's Cry 007 says, scale from one to 10, how often do people use your name as a bad pun? 11, and I fucking hate it. 
Ugh, it's the worst. Uh, Devil's Cry continues. But seriously, episode 300 reminded me of all the feels Last of Us put me through. But that giraffe scene has never left me. We take for granted being their games that that moments tend to hit us hard and we put the controller down for a second. Like that moment in Gears 2 or the ending of Journey was a big that moment for me. What are your top three that moments in gaming so far? I won't spoil anything for everybody. Uh, but my biggest that moments in gaming, I, the giraffe scene is nice in The Last of Us, but I'll say the ending. The very ending is a that moment for me. Uh, the moment that everything comes together in Bioshock is up there for me. The twist near the end of KOTOR is a big one for me. Um, I'll go with that. Those three. Those three. Also, Finding Garrus in Mass Effect 2. I guess it's a minor spoiler, but... Uh, but no, those three, the ending of the last of us, the moment you realize the truth in Bioshock and the twist in KOTOR. And if you know what they are, you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, but those are big ones. Uh, and then finally, before we move on, it's letter time. It's letter time. Pee wee squitters wrote in and said, Adam, you're the fucking man. Thank you. About four years ago, I had the best job I've ever had. My dream job, if you may. One day I made a very quick mistake and got removed from my position and put in a much shittier one. I'm in the Navy, so you don't really get fired, you get removed. Depression and work dissat dissatisfaction are definitely a real thing and getting back to where I wanted to be just felt hopeless. About two years later, I discovered your podcast and holy shit, has it helped brighten my day every day. I could always count on you to put out A plus content. Uh, I'd give it like a C minus, but. And help me not think about how much I hated my job and the regret I felt about fucking it all up listening to you about how you chased your dreams and made them reality helped me and ins keep inspired and keep my nose to the grindstone and keep pushing forward to get back to where i wanted to be in life well yesterday i got the call and i got that dream job back baby i'll be goddamned if i fuck it up again love everything you do now i'm gonna go crack a beer and play on my brand new steam deck congratulations peewee squitters i i read that one not to suck my own dick but just to let everybody know that like you know if you're in a job you hate if something's going on and you don't like it just don't give up there's always you can always just just take it one step at a time and know that damn it mickey loves you and someday you'll get over that hump i don't know what you could have done in the navy to get yourself removed i assume it's like when homer accidentally went into like enemy waters and then had to explain to everyone it was his first day but uh shout out to them because i hate that episode actually but uh congratulations squitters and everybody take take uh, inspiration for peewee squitters you too could eventually achieve your dream job and then get a brand new steam deck I like it. Thank you so much for all the submissions, everybody. Let's keep this ball rolling and switch things up. Get into our Smash Hit segment, the official game show of Remember the Game Industries. Play one, remake one, erase one. And a huge thank you to Classic Concentration from the NES for unknowingly providing us with the theme music for the show. The rules are simple. Every week I give our patrons three retro video games. They can play one as it was released, remake one as a modern game, and the third is erased from time forever. And as always, there's no wrong answers, but there is a right one. We'll get there in a second. This week, since we're talking a lesser-known Capcom NES game, I went with three more of them. Bionic Commando, Codename Viper, and Strider. And 32% of you said you'd play Bionic Commando, remake Strider, and erase Codename Viper. So let's see what a few of you had to say here, and then I'll tell you what the right answer was. Justin Combustion said, this is an easy one. Play Codename Viper, remake Strider, and erase Bionic Commando. Why? Because I said so. That's why. That is an A-plus answer. I like it. No fluff. Solid reasoning all around. No double secret probation for Justin. Uh, J. Rotimus Prime said, wow, three fantastic fucking games. Watch your mouth, Prime. Watch the language. Uh, can we just get episodes for all three of these, please? I'll play Codename Viper to drum up some nostalgia, remake Bionic Commando because there's a lot to upgrade into something awesome on new hardware, and erase Strider because there's already a remake that is pretty sweet. Well, if you erase that, you're erasing the remake, too. You're fucked. You're fucked. Actually, there is no definitive rule. I just feel like saying that today. There is no rule on whether or not remakes get erased when you're erased, but. Uh, Majora 6978 said, okay, so for this one, play Bionic Commando as arm mechanic was well ahead of its time and you feel like a boss when you can combo swings and kills. Remake Viper as it is an underrated gem. And then sadly, erase Strider since I can play the better Genesis version. I'm going to let it slide, but I we really don't have a definitive ruling on whether erasing a game erases all the other ones. You're rolling the dice though. I'll tell you all right now. Anyone that does that, you're rolling the dice. That you might get fucked over with the erasing. And the whole butterfly effect thing. 
Maverick Marty said, I'll be a little unorthodox in my reasoning this time. I'll play Strider because it came out in my birth year. I'll remake Bionic Commando because it's the oldest. And I'll erase Codename Viper because it looks and sounds the dumbest story-wise. I can't tell you what the story is, but how on earth do you think Codename Viper sounds stupider than Strider? That, that makes no sense. And your name is Maverick Marty. Come on. I, I don't, I'm not going to probation you, but I don't know. And the Boa said, I'll play Viper. I used to trade games with my buddy all the time so I could play this as a kid. The nostalgia is real. Nothing like that muffled thank you sound when rescuing a prisoner. Oh, is that a thing? I didn't, I've never played this game, but I I miss trading games with my friends. That was good times. Uh, remake Bionic Commando because it's happened and the remake is better. So just do that again, but better. And then Erase Strider. Nothing against it, but I don't like it as much as the other two. And rules are rules. And that's solid reasoning. Uh, I'm going with the minority this week. I'm going with 14% of you, including Jamie Rostand. Rostand, excuse me, who said Erase Strider. We have the Mega Drive. I mean, Genesis version. Play Bionic Commando. This looks cool, although it's very hard. Remake Codename Viper. I think a 2D HD remake uh, would be awesome. Imagine a platformer with that 2D HD. I'm curious how that would play. Like, imagine Super Mario Brothers looking like that. It'd be, it'd be funky. Uh, same re same order, different uh, reasoning for me. I'm gonna play. I've never played any of these. All right. I don't. I don't even know what Strider or Codename Viper are. But I'm gonna play Bionic Commando because I think it has the coolest name of the three. And David Ray keeps talking about it. I'm gonna remake Codename Viper because I think it's the second coolest name. And I'd like to think you play as a man that could turn into a snake. And then I'm gonna erase Strider because I think that name is lame as fuck. You can stride right into the delete bin, my friend. Delete bin? Yeah, that works. Uh, thank you, everybody that wrote in to play along as always. Speaking of playing, what have I been up to over the last seven days? Honestly, not much. We've been on the road a lot. I've barely played anything. When I have had time, I have been playing Little Nemo the Dream Master, which you're about to hear about. Uh, I've been playing that Prince of Persia, New Crown, Lost Crown, whatever it's called. I haven't had much time, though. i got to get back into it. And I've been playing The Last of Us Part Two very sparingly. Because I haven't played it since it came out, and replaying The Last of Us Part 1 has me hankering for some clickery and so. Anyways. And then I'm about to start Donkey Kong 64 and NFL Blitz 2000 when I get back for upcoming episodes of RTG. Which, one of those I'm exponentially more excited about than the other, but we will see. Anyway, okay. Uh, here's what's going to happen. I need a drink of water. We're going to pause here. We're going to let a sponsor do their thing. And when we get back, it's all Little Nemo the Dream Master talk. All right? We will be right back after this. Now, in the winter, I don't mind staying inside and cooking. Or trying to cook, anyways. It's cold and dark out there. But it's summer now. I want to go outside and do things. I don't want to be standing over a hot stove cooking away. And I really, really suck at it. Fuel up for summer with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. These things are legit. And if you're someone like me that can't cook to save your life, it's even better. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen meals right to your door. No prep, no mincing, no dicing, no slicing. And best of all, no cleanup. Two minutes and you've got delicious, healthy meals ready to go. And this isn't like the frozen crap you get at the store. Factor offers over 35 meals to choose from every week. So you've always got options and they have something for everyone. Extra protein? They got you. Trying to watch your calories? They got you. Keto? Yeah, they got you. Filet mignon, shrimp, blackened salmon. Oh man, they have breakfast options, snack options, tons of add-ons. You can avoid meat, extra meat. It's like having a personal chef without having some weirdo living in your house and again just one more reminder no prep and no cleanup it's summer get out there and enjoy it head to factormeals.com slash rtg50 and use code rtg50 to get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next month that's code rtg50 at factormeals.com slash rtg50 to get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next month while your subscription is active all right, let's talk a little bit of Little Nemo. As always, I like to let you nerds sound off on the, guest, the game we're covering before my guest and I hog the microphone. And so there was no shortage of comments this week. Let's see what a few of you had to say. Lord Finish said, One of the games from my mom's rainy day stash. An amazing game and one of my childhood favorites. It was something completely new at the time. Graphics were one of the best I've ever seen. And the whole animal suit thing was awesome. It was literally like living the dream. For a small boy like me. You know what? I actually agree with a lot of that. This really does have that. I know it sounds hokey, but you are right. It really is like living a dream. You get to you get to just like hang out in a world where you get to take over animal abilities and eat candy. It's fucking, it's pretty dreamy. 
Carbon Fiber Zombie said, hell yes. This game is amazing and creative and nothing else like it. We ended up getting an NES in a garage sale after getting our Super Nintendo and it came with this game, Top Gun, and some Bugs Bunny puzzle game that no one remembers. The fuck they don't because that's probably Bugs Bunny's uh, Crazy Castle and that game's fucking awesome. So you shut your mouth, zombie. Uh, anyways, Zombie says, I loved riding the animals and their special abilities. Also had no clue this was a licensed game of a cartoon movie. Great pick, and I'm stoked about the podcast. I actually just found out it was a licensed game based on a movie just now. So I didn't know that either. That's fat. I have to look this movie up now. Uh, Coda Blaze said, looking back now, that completely black background was a bold and unique design choice that young stupid me could never have appreciated the value of. It was such an exciting game to go to bed thinking about as a kid. I actually like that a couple levels have the solid back, back, black background. A, because I think it adds to the level. And B, uh, I think it probably makes the game run smoother. So I, uh, not every level has it, but I, I like that solid black background as well, actually. Uh, Archangel Otaku said, I'm just going to say it. It's a great game, but damn that train level. I agree with that. I hate that fucking train level. I'm, you and I are on the same page on that one, Otaku. Fuck that train level. And Wildcard said, Adam, be honest. How did All Right get you to cover this? Does he have photos of you playing a Saturn? Did he pay you off? Does he have the videos from Molly's Wild College phase? Did he blow your cartridge? We want answers. Yes, if anyone doesn't know, All Right is one of our longest standing hot dogs. Uh, a polar, uh, a pillar here in this uh, Remember the Game community. And he has been asking me to cover this game for probably 250 weeks now. And I know on the early days of the show, I used to say, hey, if you'd like to come on the show, shoot me a message. I still get a lot of messages about that. I can't accommodate everybody anymore. So it's very rare that I bring people on the show. And I want to make this abundantly clear to anyone that's paid to get on the show. I don't want you to feel hosed or anything like that. The fact is, I know a lot of people have been on me to cover this game. I asked all my friends. I didn't have any regular guests come on the show. And I just felt like this guy, all right, has been such a, a rock solid, contributing, nice Beloved is maybe a strong word. Tolerated member of the community for so many years now that I said, you know what, Andrew, come on the show and I'll finally give you a chance to explain to the masses why this stupid game means so much to you. So I am going to cue up some music. And when it stops... All right, and I are going to talk Little Nemo the Dream Master for the NES, which originally released in North America in September of 1990. Enjoy the podcast, everybody. Let's go. Right. So as I'm sure I explained during the infamous intro, uh, we're going outside the lines of Remember the Game this week. I don't know. Maybe it's the, the 300s. Maybe I'm so far up into the sky that I'm losing all concept of reality. But but either way, we're actually bringing a, a longtime member of ye old community on the show this week to talk about a game that he has been asking me to cover consistently for the better part of five years. And that is, as many of you know, what do you what do you want me to call you? What do you want to go by? I don't you go, I, go by Andrew. That's fine. All right, because I was like, I know he was like two or three different handles. And exactly. I don't like all right, so then uh, Andrew is my guest this week. Andrew, before we even mention Little Nemo or anything, how are you? How's how's I'm, life? I'm good, man. Everything's great. Uh, really happy to be here and talking about one of my favorite childhood games. Yes, and now you, buddy, you are. I I I don't have the the stats in front of me. For when you first joined our our little uh, group of, of misfits, but you are an OG. You've been around a long time. Yeah. So I found the podcast during COVID, and that's when you know 2020 is when I kind of got back into gaming. But you know, I'm not the first person to bring this game up in the Discord. I was not the first. Who the is first? First one. Hall of Flame or Slick Motherfucking Rick? Slick Motherfucking Rick. That yep. greasy bastard, he's still fucking with me, even in the... Oh, that fucking guy. So I'm sure he is delighted to see this, this game yeah. get covered. And, yeah, and you know what, though? Day. If he could say something, he'd probably be like, man, I'm really sorry that I we bothered you about this game for so oh, long. Oh, for sure. The fucking guy for apologized sure. for fucking goddamn everything. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, 
All right. Well, that okay. So it is Little Nemo, the Dream Master, and I and I really do mean it. Listen, a lot of you have games that you have been pounding me over the years that you're like, ah, oh, you really you should do this game. I really think you should do this game. I can't think in in the six years this show has existed, I can't think of a game that I have been more consistently asked for than Little Nemo, the Dream Master. And I like this game. I'm not I'm not poo pooing. Yeah. I'm I have no ill will toward this game. But let me ask you, my friend, you've you've waited for this moment. What is it? about little Nemo the Dream Master that just tickles your pickle like it does. It you know it's one of those games that I remember playing and it's it might be the box art. It was not one that I owned, but it was one that we consistently rented and I had a childhood friend down the street. His name is Derek. He would come down during the summers and we would play this game and it, we could never beat it. Um but the it was always so much fun to play and I think that, and I'm sure we'll get into it, but that's something that Capcom really just nailed back in that NES era, era is that they put out great games that were fun to play. This game is in, by no means perfect, but it's just a lot of fun to play. Yeah, I'll give you that. It's You know what? Like, Because I, and I explained this a bit during the intro as well, but I remember seeing this game in one of my magazines as a lad. I don't remember if it was Game Pro or whatever the fuck, but I remember seeing it. And, and for you youngins, like that used to be... Those magazines were gospel. You saw yep. something in there. You saw three screenshots and like a quick blurb, and you were like, "I have to play this right now." And and this was one that caught my eye because again, it, like the idea of if you've never played it, the idea of the game is you control this little kid named Nemo, and you're in his dreams, and all you your only attack is throwing candy, and you feed candy to animals, and then you get their powers. And I remember seeing the ads for it and being like, "This looks this looks awesome." And I I didn't realize it as a kid, but realizing now as an adult, I didn't realize it was a Capcom game either. I uh I'm a I'm a card carrying member of the Capcom fan club. They must be even going back as far as the NES. Not everything Capcom does is perfect, but man, mm -hmm. is there there aren't many studios I think that are as universally liked by gamers as Capcom. Yeah, they have a good and it, exactly. And this game isn't perfect. It, it's got some warts, um, and there were some small things maybe they could have done to make it better. But it looks awesome. It sounds awesome, and it feels great when you play yeah. it. It feels really good. Like some of the design choices were were maybe not the best, but um, it, it's they had it figured out, man. By the by the end of the NES era here. Yeah, I I agree with that. It does play really well. Uh, one thing I noticed, because like again, I I played it as a kid. I think we rented it once or twice, and like. I remember it being pretty tough. I'm replaying it now. I bought it physically about two weeks ago to get ready for this episode. And mm -hmm. I've been playing it. And in and in three or four sessions, like I can get practically to the end of the game. I don't know if yeah. maybe I'm just not as shitty at games as I was when I was a kid or not. But like, it didn't seem as difficult. One thing I did notice though was like, and I don't want this to sound as a slight toward it because I like this game, but it, it almost... I'm still used to playing like the Mega Man's. Like when I think Capcom on the NES, I think Mega Man. And yeah. and playing this, like, there's not. It kind of felt like they developed it in like six months. Like, and I don't mean that in a bad thing. It's not a bad game, but like, it's not super deep. It's not. There's not a like the levels. You can beat it in under an hour if you know what you're doing, which which yeah. you can do with the Mega Man games as well. But like, I, I really I wish they had made more of these. Because yeah. I'd really like to see what they could do with a sequel or something where they had more time and maybe a bigger budget to spend on it, you know? Like, yeah, this felt... It, Sorry, it go was, ahead. It was just a little piecemeal. Like, yeah. so at the beginning of the game, it's like, okay, we're going to we're establish that you got to grab these keys, and it, it puts the focus on exploration. And you're, you're exploring these levels and trying to find these keys. And it feels very open. Like, not, you know, not like an open world, but Mega Man is very linear. And this game it feels open until you realize that there's really only one sequence to get the other animal captures, which are basically your power-ups to get to certain areas and get keys. And it looks open, but once you know it, it really doesn't play open. And like you said, you can finish it in under an hour if you know what you're doing. Yeah. And I, I agree with that. It, it really, it gives the allure uh, that it's or the allure it gives you uh, I don't know what the word is it, it makes you feel like it's got more freedom to it than it does not that exactly. it's bad I'm not saying that's right. bad it's a fine game but I just yeah it really you are right it, it just like 
So I don't know for how many people that know, I know I don't do a lot of history lessons on this show and this isn't a history lesson, but like the NES was a goddamn phenomenon and Nintendo put a, you know, every gamer was trying to make his, or every company out there was making, that's why there's so many shit games on the NES because every game developer under the sun was like, get games out as fast as possible and get them on the NES, like get, sell, 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 sell. And by, by Capcom standards, I felt like this one, kind of came across like they were like we have like you said piecemeal they're like we have a little bit of spare time let's throw this game together and get it out there still better than a lot of the junk on the nes yeah but it did feel like something that they like you know someone wrote in and mentioned how like in the first level the background is solid black and i think that works because it's nighttime and it makes everything else pop but i do also wonder if a little part of that was like ah, that'll speed things up like that you know what i mean i don't know i don't i don't well and i agree and when you get to the second level and they have that you know, more detailed background, the sprites are all flickering like crazy. And there's a lot of slowdown in that. Like you saw, especially like in Mega Man 3. Um, Part of that origin might be because, so this was like an early 1900s comic strip. And then they made a movie in the late 80s uh, about it. I did try to watch the movie for this and I got about five minutes. It was mostly Nemo screaming. Ah! the whole time oh. like on his bed as it's flying through the city. i'm like i can't do this oh, i can't okay. watch it um but this came out right after that so i don't know if they were trying to get this out to to pair with that movie or what and that that could explain it but it's like you have this key exploration mechanic and then later on they completely ditch that and they explain it away for some reason which i'm not really sure why either and they, the game completely changes you know two-thirds of the way through it yeah yeah, it's fucking that's fucking weird too. I agree. Yeah. Um yeah, I got to people have mentioned this movie and I was like, fuck, I wonder if I need to look up this movie or not. But I, that makes me less inclined to watch the movie. I try. <laughs> and some people say, some people say it's good and it like it looks good, you know, and I think it does capture what they were going for as far as the original comic strip goes, but it just I I I didn't have the patience to sit through it. It wasn't sure. something that was on my radar to do other than for this and I tried and it didn't work out. That's fair. Yeah, it. I. I have to say, I'm not exactly like smitten with seeing this movie, but but, but, but yeah. Blah, 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 maybe it's maybe a, someday. It's a video uh, game podcast, so I was like, well, I'll just focus on the game. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. You've already done more prep than I usually do, <laughs> so that's fine. Uh, but speaking of prep, I have played this. I have gotten right to the end. I yeah. remember. I remember thinking it was hard as a kid, and we're going to talk about the levels and stuff. I remember thinking it was hard as a kid. I remember people saying it's hard when you Google it right now, like the Wikipedia page and stuff. Some of the reviews are like, it's too hard. I have to say, man, it's not that it's easy, but like by NES standards, this isn't that bad. Like Mega Man is harder than this is. Yeah. For the most part, I would definitely agree. I I played this the other day. I played this back to back with Mega Man three and Mega Man three. I was sweating a lot more during that. Once you know what to do in this game, it's really not too difficult except for like one or two spots. There's one yeah. spot toward the end that, that gets really tough. Other than that, when you know what to do and you know how to manipulate the enemies around it, it's, it's not too bad. Yeah. Cause that's one of the things like it, it's, uh, I'm respawning enemies are nothing new in NES games, but this game, man, the fucking respawn clip of this yeah. game for the enemies is like, you know, like in some games, it's like you just barely left the screen where the enemy is and then you come back and the enemy's back. This one, sometimes it feels like you don't even have to leave the screen. They're just like, hey, you haven't moved on in four seconds. We're putting that enemy back again. Yep, especially it's like, those oh, fucking things that drop out of the sky. Those, those fucking pollen seed things, whatever yes. the fuck they are. Fuck those. Those are the Medusa heads of Little Nemo. I hate those yeah. fucking things. Uh, but what, what offsets the difficulty is it, first of all, it does have the infinite continues, which I have to say, huge fan. Of yeah. NES games that include infinite continues. I, I, I mean, I think, I don't think lives have a place in gaming in 2024, but obviously on the NES they did, but like, let us keep continuing. You know, it's, yeah. it's, if you want to do it with the password system, then okay, but let us keep continuing. Don't make me yeah. start all the way over again. And in this game, it's, it really doesn't punish you at all because there's not many checkpoints. So when you, you know, when you may be halfway through a level and you, you lose your last life, you reboot back at the beginning of the level and you really don't lose any progress until you get to what are basically like the wily stages towards the end where it's three stages, but really, you know, one stage. And if you, if you die and you need to, or you game over, um, it does make you start back at the beginning of nightmare. Yeah. Well, and like you mentioned it, it, uh, 
so much of this game I felt like when I first started playing it, I was like, fuck, this is tough. And then you play it a little bit and you realize that a lot of it is so like the object of each level is to collect a, a certain number of keys. And like and and it's a when you when you've never played it before, you actually don't know how many keys you need. And it can be yeah. a little bit infuriating when you get to the end of the level and you've yep. got five keys, and then it was like, Oh, you need six. Ha <laughs> ha. And you have to go back through the level and find that yep. last key. Or or when you have five keys you're searching for the sixth key and then you get to the end and they say oh just kidding in this level you only need five that yes. also will piss you off oh son of a bitch and it like but once you've played it a couple of times and you know how many keys are in each level not only do you know how many keys are in each level but you know where all the keys are in each level suddenly yeah. it does become an exponentially faster game because yeah. you know like I can I can hop into the first few levels now and the only reason anything goes wrong is if I happen to fuck up a few jumps and get caught by some enemies. But otherwise, yeah. like I know exactly like two thirds of the game is exploring levels and figuring out how many keys I need and where all the keys are. And once you know how many keys you need and where all the keys are, then it just becomes a uh 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 just execute execute yeah. it. And and to be honest with you, like Again, up until near the end of the game, I tr I really don't find the game very difficult once I know where everything I need is. Right. Now you're just rolling. Uh yep. the, and like and then obviously like the big the big um hook gameplay wise to this game is you just play as this this stupid kid, Nemo, with purple hair, who uh between every level his parents yell at him that he won't stay in bed. And I gotta yeah. say, his parents seem like half assed alcoholics that are like <laughs> downstairs and they're like they're well, not actually going up and checking on their kid. They're just yelling at him to go back to bed over and over again. Yeah. And, you know, the, I think the first one, it's like he's in bed and they're telling them, him to go back to bed. And then he's in bed later on and they're telling him to get up. It's like, what the fuck do you want me to do, mom? Yeah, like, what do you want? Like, listen here, you fucking half ass parent. How about you go check on your goddamn kid? Yeah, I I agree. Uh, yeah. Those little cutscenes mean, I have to say, the story of this game means fucking Oh, my God. To me. Oh, like, it's... it's I don't get it. Like, so you're so, just a kid dreaming and feeding animals candy. And then all of a sudden at the end of the game, there's like a giant fucking blurb of story right before the end. Yeah. So if you let it go at the beginning, there's like a little cut scene at the beginning, which it's actually decent. Uh, and there's a clown that, that comes into your room on a blimp and he tells you that you need to go to slumberland to be a playmate for the princess. And right away it establishes that girls have cooties because the only thing that makes Nemo pause to get in the blimp with this random clown is that it's a girl and it'd be weird for him to be a playmate with a girl. Then the clown says she's not just a girl, she's a princess. And he's like, well, anyway, she sent me here with a bag of candy. And then Nemo says, oh, I like candy. Anyone smart enough to give me candy can't be bad. And then he gets into the blimp. Like the only thing that's missing from making this a nightly news special is like a white van or something. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> well, it's because I, to be fair, when I was a kid, I don't ever remember my parents telling me not to get in a blimp with strangers, like a van. Yeah. Yes, but a blimp. I think my dad would have been like, "Take your chances. It's you don't so get to go on a blimp like, often. Go see." Yeah, he's like, "Let's go. I'm out of yeah. here." Yeah, it makes no candy, sense. So. and then you're basically just going from level to level in these dreams, feeding animals candy. Um, yeah, it's fucking. Big. I don't get it, but Lace the levels what to make them fall asleep. I don't know what what that. I know with, but. that that's the most fucked up thing. It's like so when you get into the levels, like the controls are hella simple. You can't run. You can't do anything. You basically can just you can kind of jump, uh, and you can throw pieces of candy up in the air. And there's all these weird monsters and, and animals and shit walking around in these levels. Like the first level, you're in like the mushroom forest or whatever the fuck. And yeah. uh, when you throw the candy, it has one of two reactions. If it's an animal that doesn't want to eat it, when it hits them, it just like stuns them for a moment. And you can try to sneak past them, but that's it. Or if it's an animal that'll eat it, they'll start chewing it. And if you throw them three pieces of candy, uh, like Andrew said, for for I don't get why, but it puts them to sleep. It it kills them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It knocks them like like I know dogs aren't allowed to eat like they can't eat like licorice or something. It can like kill them. So okay. like maybe that's what this candy is doing. I don't know. Yeah, but, it doesn't quite kill them because then you can you know you get to ride the lizard like Yoshi. So you know it, yes. it's still it still is living somehow. But this candy has manipulated it in a way that. It is now yours. Yeah. And I and I really do like I think at the end of the day, that's kind of the crutch of the gameplay in this game yeah. is the, the ability of like, especially when you're playing it for the first time, it's not knowing what animals am I going to be able to feed candy to and take control of in this level because it's all kinds of different. Like it starts out, it's like the frog thing 
and the mole that digs and the lizard that can climb walls. And, but then yeah. like eventually like there's bees, there's fucking gorillas, there's fish, there's all kinds of animals that you can take control of. And right. I think that's, that really like it, it, to be honest with you, if there wasn't for the animals and their abilities, uh, it'd be kind of a boring game. Cause like he doesn't move fast. He has no attacks. He just has yeah. a shitty jump and throws candy. Like he's, yeah, he, Nemo's yeah. kind of a bitch. He definitely is a bitch, but he even says like in the game, like when you, when you get into it later on, he's like, well, I can't go, I can't go, you know, free the, the, the king of slumberland. I'm just a kid. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, like it does control, it controls really tight. You know, I, th I think yeah. the controls on it, like he, he moves slow, but he is also a kid in this foreign world. And I think they do a great job of capturing that, that like this kid really doesn't belong here and he needs help to get through each level. Um, and you're not able to do it without the use of those, those animal friends. And I, like you said, I think you nailed it that that's really the crux of the gameplay is finding those power ups. And a lot of them are fun. You know, they're fun to use. Not all of them. Like the mole sucks. He just, and mole he's only does. in that first level just to dig down and find that one key. But you know, some of them are a lot of fun and it, that is what makes the gameplay of this. Yeah. Enjoyable. Well, and you, and you're right. Like the, it does control. Well, it, I think what offsets those controls just a little bit is the fact that like, it is, it is, if you've never played it, like the respawn rate of some of these enemies is yeah. fucking relentless. And, yeah. and Nemo's got like no health kid has three hits and it is yeah. really easy to get hit. Even just trying to jump over some basic enemies, like the snakes that crawl at you and stuff like yep. you're, he, he's very responsive. He jumps when you tell him to, he jumps how you tell him to, but you don't, it's not, it's not Mario three where you're literally jumping 20 times the height of enemies over them. Like you're barely yeah. covering some of these guys. Yeah. It's and, tight. Like he, you have to be precise with a, a lot of that. And yeah, and that, that does make it that that's where the difficulty I think comes from. Oh yeah. There's no, cause otherwise like there's no timer. Uh, there's not a lot of holes. There's a couple, but there's not a ton of holes to fall in. Uh, it's mostly just the fucking nonstop, barrage of enemies coming at you and yep. and again you can't fight them when you're nemo all you can do is freeze them with candy and you know what i found replaying it some of the enemies i i would freeze them with candy and like like those snakes that come at you if i yep. froze them with candy it actually made them harder to jump yes over. yeah you like can't I, you, you need them moving towards you to get over them yeah so sure. i was like well what the fuck good is this then like why am yeah. i throwing why am i wasting my precious candy yeah on these stupid animals yep. um but then, like Andrew said, like yeah, you you eventually there's some animals you can feed candy to, and then you on on listen on paper, especially as a kid, that's what hooked me reading this because I was like, wait, so I'm a kid who feeds animals candy, and then once I feed them candy, then they become my friend, and then I can ride them and use their powers to explore the levels. That yep. sounds sick. Then I actually play the game, and the first animal you take over is this like toad <laughs> thing, and yep. you feed him three candies, and he falls asleep. And then you don't hop on his back and ride him. You crawl <laughs> in him and wear him and fucking get his ability to jump higher. And yep. I was like, I understand it's a video game and we're all just having fun, but that's a little fucked up. Oh yeah. And you wear these animals skin and you get their powers while you do it. Yep. It's a little I mean, morbid. is it, is it that much different? Is it that much different than the frog suit in Mario three though? No, it, it's it, well, that, the one difference, came, that one they've already skinned the frog and it comes out exactly. of a random question block. Exactly. I mean, this one, the, I guess you watch it happen, which yeah, which, I, I can live. Listen, all right. I can live with buying a fucking suit of frog and then putting it on. <laughs> all right. I don't want to go out to the wild drug a frog with what appears to be roofy candy and then climb into his mouth and wear him until I don't want to wear him anymore. That's and fair I don't, enough. And it's weird. Some enemies you climb inside them and wear them. And then other enemies you like, like the lizard or the gorilla, you ride their back. Yeah. And I'm just, I'd love to know. And I, and it's, it's my, it's like, I'm not even a nitpick. I'm just breaking balls, yeah. but oh, I would yeah, like to sure. know why I'd like to know why they made that decision. Like, I wonder why they were like, we'll have you ride some and we'll have you inside. Yeah. Cause some. you easily, like it easily would have made sense to ride the frog or ride the bee. Oh yeah. Um, instead yeah, of yeah. wearing them. Yeah. But I mean, Nemo looks sick as a bee though. He does. He That's sick. the coolest costume is the bee. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, okay. Uh, I want to get into the specific animals and their powers yeah. and stuff. Let's, yep. let's, let's take, let's, I'll let a sponsor in here. 
I need a drink of water. So I'm going to let a sponsor in here. They will peddle their wares, and we appreciate them doing so. But then when we get back, we'll talk about all the different animals you can climb inside of. That, that fucking sounds weird. But we'll be right back. <laughs> it makes sense. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is anyone else blown away that it's June already? It's unreal. I swore this year that I was going to pull back on a certain bad habit and spend more time promoting and growing the show. I've definitely stuck to the second one, but I'm still struggling to give up my 420-related advice. Hint, hint. Uh, we're almost halfway through the year already. If you've made a resolution and you've been sticking to it, hell yeah, be proud of yourself. But if you've kind of fallen off the rails, it's okay. Get up and get back on the train or wagon or horse or whatever it is. Making changes isn't easy, and therapy can be a great accountability buddy to help you stay on course. If you're kicking the therapy ball around, consider trying better help. I've used them to talk through some of the things I have going on away from the mic, and they've helped me overcome a few pretty serious mental blocks. I can honestly, genuinely say that I look at life differently now than I did before I talked to my therapist in a very positive way. I really did develop some skills that I used to stay Stay calm when things are weighing on my mind and I wouldn't trade them for anything. And what was great was BetterHelp is all online. As you might know, I stay pretty busy and being able to talk to my therapist from my office when I could squeeze it in was huge. I met with my therapist over video, but you can do it that way over phone or even just chat if you want. And if the therapist you're paired with isn't a fit, you can swap out any time. Take a moment. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RememberTheGame today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RememberTheGame. Okay, so I don't know the final tally, but there's like, I don't know, there's probably eight or nine animals that you can ride or ride in or ride on. I Minor thing, but like I, I found it, I don't know. I don't even know. So it's not even a criticism. I guess you need to have enemies, but like there's yeah. enemies in the game where some of them, like you're like, man, I wonder what'll happen if I ride that animal. And then you realize that there's some of them you can't. And yep. I minor thing, I guess, cause you have, again, you had to have enemies, but I, I can't help but wonder with some of them. Like, fuck, I wonder like what would have happened if I could ride that? Like, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like there's a, few yeah, I, I the one, the ones that you can ride are pretty like docile. Like they're just kind of hanging there and just shuffling back to forth. Yeah. Versus the other ones that are coming at you like ready to kill you. So it, it is like obvious, I think, which ones you can capture and which ones you can't. But yeah, some of them, like I think the snake would have made, you know, could have made a, a cool level. You could have made a yeah. cool level out of that, um, given it an attack versus just having it come at you. But, yeah. Well, and like you said, like as a kid, I think it was a little bit more like, man, I wonder what I could do with these. Like as an adult, it's, yeah. it's pretty, you, you throw a piece of candy at them. And like you said, the ones that are going to, like the ones that you can't ride are usually the ones coming at you quickly trying to kill you. And then the other yeah. ones are just kind of standing there and you're like, all right, that one seems friendly. But then yeah. when you throw the candy, uh, either it hits them and they just do a little stutter and they're, and they're stuck for a second or they do yeah. the giant like chomp. And you can tell right away if they're chomping because if they're chomping, then they're one you can ride. Uh, do you have a favorite? Is it the oh, bee? It's got to be the bee. I mean, you can fly and you have an offensive attack with the stinger. Yeah. So you can fly to a point, right? You get like about 10 seconds, which makes it a little bit more difficult. I like that. Um, but it again, it reminds me of like the raccoon tail in Mario 3. Yeah. Where... yeah that that Because I agree, the bee is the best one because you can fly yeah. and you can shoot your stingers. So you've got, you got both worlds. But I will say that limited flight, uh, fucked me the first time I because in that oh, it's like this yeah. third level where you get the bee and he's yep. down by all those spikes and I was yep. like oh, okay well now I can fly out of here grab the key and get out of here and I got like I just about got to the key and then I fell back down and died in the pit and I was yep. like well, what the fuck apparently you're just an incredibly out of shape bee it's that a great can only last for about eight seconds that is a great cap control there I, I applaud the, the devs for that one that that fucked me and like and toward the end there's the, um the one level where you have to go up into the attic. Oh uh, yeah. And uh many a time I would try to fly up there with the bee and I would come up like one one push short and he'd fall all the way down and I and I'd have to find the right place to jump off of yep. to be able to fly up there before I ran out of gas. Yeah, okay. so well yeah, yeah, there's the one with the attic and then there's the other auto scroll up, which um in the clouds, where you have yes. to stop on the clouds on your way up. Um and then you have enemies there too, which is Again, a, a tough section the first couple times you do it. After you learn it, it's not too bad. But I thought they did a great job with the bee. I also love the gorilla. I thought they did an awesome job with the gorilla. Um, you only really get to see him in that second level. 
But that yeah. punch, when you punch those snakes in the face, it's it's very satisfying. It is satisfying. I I like that the gorilla's got an offense, and then he can also climb the walls and stuff. But uh, yeah. and I think my favorite thing about the gorilla is that you actually ride him. I, I think it yeah. looks. I genuinely think like because you were right that Nemo looks cool when he's wearing the bee skin, but like I for the most part, I think it's cooler when he's riding the animals than when he's. Yes when he's wearing them. And I, yeah. and I love that you're riding that gorilla. The only problem with that fucking gorilla dude is in that goddamn level. Uh, there's so many enemies coming at you. Those like, oh, I yeah. don't know they fucking are. They're like the skeletons of birds or something flying at you. Uh-huh. And the, the gorilla can punch, which is a nice defense. But if you don't punch in the right spot, you'll miss. Plus if you accidentally touch a wall and he starts climbing the wall and then when he's climbing the wall, you can't punch. And now you're just a giant target on the back of this fucking gorilla. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he fucked me a few. I like the gorilla. He's probably my number two, but he did fuck me a few times. Yep. Um, I'm just going down my list. I, I do have him ranked. Uh, I, like, <laughs> I love it. Keep I like going. the lizard. The lizard. I think the lizard's good. Uh, I love that you're a little bit faster with him. You lose a little bit of height on your jump, but he's fast. He gets an extra hit and also can climb walls. The That's the purple lizard, right? Yeah, the, ori- yeah. Uh, the original Yoshi. Yeah, yeah, he is, yeah. And what I like about him is that he can fit under some things. Yes. Like, yeah, I, I, I quite enjoyed playing as him. And you mentioned it, sorry, I meant to say, I forgot about this. Uh, I like how some animals, when you get on them, you gain additional health, and you lose yeah. it once you get off of them. Yeah, um, like the gorilla but, is a tank. He's got oh, like yeah. five. The gorilla yeah, is a tank. I really, I actually thought that was really cool, that there were some animals where you got on them, and not only do you get extra abilities, but you fucking health means something in this game because again it yes the enemies never fucking stop those fucking paul and oh fucking get there fuck those things anyway yep. okay so yeah i'm actually three for three with you i like the bee i like the gorilla and i like the lizard and there's one other animal i really like i'm serious i'm curious to see what each one you make yeah so me. i i have i do have the frog next i like those three are like the best to me from there it goes downhill pretty quickly i guess the frog and the hermit crab are kind of like neck and neck um yeah uh, the, the frog, you're able to jump on enemies. You'll only have three hits, but uh, you go really slow. You have oh. to basically like spam the jump button to to keep up your speed as you're moving yeah. because I, otherwise it's like you are crawling across the, the map. And you know what's fucked is that uh, I didn't realize it until I, I got into the game for a while. It, it, it's, it's got Mega Man DNA, which shouldn't surprise me. It's Capcom. The spikes are insta-kills. Yeah, And so when you're controlling that fucking frog, and like you said, you're either crawling or jumping. When you're jumping, there's certain areas where you need to be careful where you jump because you might accidentally go up and touch the spikes. And then it doesn't matter that you had five fucking hits in your health bar. No. Fuck you. Yeah. Fucking goddamn <laughs> Capcom, you heartless bastards. But you could jump on enemies. You had a little offensive attack there. Yeah, yeah um, which I liked. Then you have the hermit crab. Um, you only see him in that one level. You have to jump really high, and then he'll turn upside down and burrow into the ground, which, again, as a kid, I thought was super cool. Um, and he's got a claw attack. You only use him for, you know, one or two little spots. Um, after that is, is the fish, which he swims awesome. No offensive attack, but he's got five hits, swims really fast, makes some of the sections in that water level easier. Does it? Does it not seem odd to you? Like, because I like the fish too, but the fish has like, it looks like he's wearing boxing gloves. Yes. I and know. So I like, think he should punch. Right? I like, oh, I totally. died because I, I assumed he attacked. And then I was like, well, what the, what kind of stupid fish are you? Like, you just, yes. you deserve to die, you dumb. And bitch. to all the people who make the jokes about the, the, about Nemo, like, which Nemo, that fish actually looks a lot like a clownfish, like, like little Nemo, or it like, does. uh, like Nemo from Finding Nemo. Yeah. So, except- like, Except that fish didn't wear fucking boxing gloves and then refused yeah. to use them. Fucking yep. stupid fish. He needs, but he needs to put that fish in the punch out. But a, the, how fast he swims is handy because Nemo is slow as fuck as a swimmer. And yeah. those goddamn tadpole enemies, they uh, just like, yeah. all oh, they do dude. is swim fast and follow you like right up your ass. And that fish is like easier to get away. They're like floating spores of the, uh, floating spores of the sea. Like yeah. they're, they're the same as those guys who float down and get you, who, if you played this game, you know, Adam's already bitched about them three or oh, four times. I hate the them. tadpoles are right on the same level. Yeah. Those tadpoles can go fuck themselves. So then next, and this might've been the one that you like. I fucking hate that mouse. What? I hate, that is I the one. How do you hate, hate on the, the mouse? mouse? 
He, listen, so, I'll take this. The mouse is adorable. He can climb walls. He's fast. And while you're riding him, for some obtuse reason, this mouse just has a mallet. With him. <laughs> and so does. when you ride him, you get to swing the mallet. It makes no sense, but I'm a huge fan of it. How can you not like the mouse? I fucking hate the mouse. So the hitbox is giant. The hitbox on, on the mouse is giant, and the hitbox on the hammer is minuscule. So, like, when you're trying to bl- break those blocks, like, when you – you know, when you have to break like the second block from the ground, yes. you got to like that, jump, you got to time that. And it's such a fucking bitch to do. It's I'll not like you'll that. die there, but I can't stand that. I can't stand the hammer or the mouse. Fuck them. Just should have been a gorilla. Wow. Wow. I mean, I, I love the mouse. I will concede when you're trying to, cause like that whole level, I hate that fucking level. That, that's that my level. least favorite level in the game other than the train is that, that one uh-huh. where you have to like, cause it's such a, there's one level where you're in Nemo's house. That's my favorite. We'll get there, but it, that yeah. is my favorite. And you need Love the mouse it. at one point, and you have to punch down these bricks to break through with your mallet. And I and I will agree, hitting the one on ground level is easy, and hitting the one at the top is easy. But for some yeah. reason, making contact with that second brick from the ground is is borderline impossible. Oh, it's, I don't it's, get infuri- it. it's infuriating. And it and is. my hate for the mouse is mostly irrational. Like I I I will concede that. Fuck that mouse. Hate him. Oh man, that breaks my heart. I love the mouse. <laughs> I wish he was in and more then, levels. And that well, and it, it makes sense where they had him, right? It makes sense that he oh, would be yeah, in the up house. In an attic. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then the mole, terrible. Yeah, the mole is garbage. Like yep. it's nice that he can dig, but he is so fucking slow. And he and, can't even and, jump. No, he doesn't jump. He's super slow. The only thing you can do with him is dig in the ground. And and the worst part is when you're digging in the ground with him, there's no enemies. There's no timer. There's nothing that can hurt you. It's just slow and boring. Yeah. It's just and like slow all they, and boring. All they had to do, like m- let him climb a wall and let him attack with his claws. And then he would not be the worst animal of the Nemo kingdom. But yeah, he is. By pretty far, shitty. he is. Yeah, he's fucking hot trash. I... I can get on board with that. I hate that fucking mole. Like, yeah. like, and like, I don't particularly enjoy the hermit crab because I find in some ways he's like the mole of the sea because yeah. he also digs incredibly slow, but he's nowhere yeah. half. He's, he's nowhere near as slow as that fucking mole is, man. And he's what got, piece of and shit. he's got pinchers that work and that can yes. kill shit. So sure. it's at least, at least you get a little bit of an offensive attack. Yeah. Fuck as that a, as a trade off. Yeah. What a crappy animal. They should be extinct. What a fucking shitty animal. Yep. Anyway, uh, I think that's all of them, isn't it? That's all of them. I think that's all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I quite enjoyed most of them as well. I just, yeah, that mole fucking sucks. I like the mouse. I think you're out to lunch, but that's fair. Uh, yep. That hermit crab, I don't, I'm not the world's biggest. And you know, actually, the fish, I like the idea of the fish, but like, you really don't need him. Like, you can beat that level quite easily without the fish. He's just <sighs> there. And it felt like I... he was just there for the sake of having another animal you could control. But. So the only reason I disagree with that is because Nemo automatically like floats up and you got to hold down and there's a couple yeah. tight spots yeah, with there spikes is. that if you don't have the fish, like I would, I would ditch the fish early. And if you don't have them, it makes it really tough, especially because you got those fucking tadpoles that are, yeah, that's that are true. I'll, pushing yeah, right. you right into the spike. So he makes a couple of those swimming spots a little bit easier, but yeah, other than that, give him a punch with those gloves and then we have like a top tier. I don't understand why you give them boxing. And like, I guess maybe someone will argue there aren't boxing gloves, they're fins, but I'm like, then whoever designed this fish should be with all due respect. Like you should be fired because these, these look like gloves. I I don't, I I thought that when I was eight and I think that now when I'm 40. Yeah. I haven't slept in two days because I've just been thinking about this fish's fucking hands. So for sure, I don't like it. Um, That's definitely going to be a point off later on. So, yeah. So now before we get into the levels, so those are the anim- animals you can control. And again, all you do is go through each level until the very end and you're just looking for keys to unlock the door to get onto the next level. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite things about this game is that at least up until the end, uh, no boss fights. And everyone yeah. that listens to this show with any regularity knows like I hate boss fights. Yeah. And the idea that like, th- dude, it's literally... If you want to, you can get through a whole level without killing a single thing. Just get the animals you need to get the keys you need to get to the door and you're out. You don't touch anybody. Yeah, the and uh, I'm strategy. curious to know. What's that? The pacifist strategy. I got you. Yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. I don't I don't know where you stand on boss fights. I presume that you don't hate them as much as me because I've got an irrational dis- despise. I, I hate them so much. Yep. Where are you? Like, do you wish that the 
because I was a little shocked that the end of the levels didn't have boss fights. I'm not no, really I think, upset, but I no, I actually like how they do that. I like how they don't have boss fights. They put the focus on basically the, the exploration and then figuring out the puzzle that is each level with what order you need to find each of the uh, animal power ups to get the keys and to get out of there. So right. I like that. And I do like that later on. Okay, now you're in Nightmare Land. Now there are some boss fights and some of them are kind of fun. So Yeah. Yeah. I think they do it. I think they do a good a good job with it overall. That was it was just one of those things that like and again, it's not a, a dunking on the game, but I it almost felt like they I'm like if they it felt like if they had a little bit more time or maybe a little bit more money to put into this game, we we would have had some boss fights. Yeah. Like I'm a little surprised. I I have to imagine that their budget for it wasn't super high because they didn't know how well it would do. They're like, we got to get this thing out. Yeah. And it's not doesn't feel half assed, but it does feel like they. I would be shocked if I heard an interview with the developers and they didn't have to leave some stuff on the floor. Yeah. Because makes, they had to get it out. That makes sense. Um. So then, as far as the levels go, and you you brought up a great point. This. It feels, especially a couple of levels like the house level, it feels like there's a few different ways you could tackle it as long as you go through the level yes. and find all the keys. But then when you really sit down and start playing it, you kind of realize like it's pretty it's pretty linear. You know, it yep. is there's really it makes you feel like you've got, you know, oh, you go up, go down, go underground, go over here, it doesn't matter, just find all the keys. But then you realize like, oh, to get to that second area, I need the animal from that area. Yes. So and you it, really don't, don't have the freedom it makes you think you have. Yeah. And I mean, in a lot of ways, I, I, and when I say, you know, when I'm talking about Mario three or I'm talking about, I'm going to say DuckTales, like I'm not putting this game in the same stratosphere as, as some of those are really considered in, but I'm just kind of using them as comparison. So sure, sure. in a lot of ways, I think that's kind of like DuckTales where you have some options like, okay, this level you can go up or down, but ultimately you end up kind of in the same spot and you may have to go there to get something to help you move forward. But um, there's really kind of only one way, unless you're going around in circles, there's really only one way to, to tackle each level. And I think that's okay too, because again, you're not just holding right and getting to the end, which those games are fun too. Uh, the fact that you do have a little bit of exploration in this game, I think is a good thing. And by the time you figure that out, it, it does make the game go a lot quicker. To totally. And, and like, and it's something that I have to remind myself of on occasion. Like it is the NES. It's yeah. not, this isn't the 64 or the super Nintendo, the Genesis, yeah. like there, there are limitations. So I think in some cases they, I think they're like, Oh, go over here to get the bee to fly up to here, to get the mouse, to break through the wall, to get to the lizard or whatever the fuck. Yeah. I feel like sometimes some of that is, is put in place as like, artificial freedom like it makes yeah. it feel like there's more than yes. it is but it, it keeps it within bounds of what the nes is capable of it does and it's it's fun like it, it's i know like we've been critical on on a bunch of things but the gameplay for the most part doing those things is fun it is enjoyable and especially the first time you're figuring them out you feel accomplished and yeah. and it, it's you know the the gameplay itself is enjoyable i agree with that it's uh it is enjoyable and i like that the levels aren't super long because yeah. if you do die uh the only because again infinite continues the only penalty for dying is uh you lose the keys you've collected but the keys are always in the same spot so now when you reload up your game to keep going uh it it it's al almost not a penalty at all because you're like okay well i know i gotta go up here and get this key and go over here and get this key and then yeah. it's back to trying to solve the rest of it it's it's very much it's so funny because as a kid like you said we rent it over and over you play it over and over and and now playing it i'm like it's not that it's it's not by no means a bad game i like this game but i was like this is uh like i i could if i if i just sat down and focused i could beat this game in in a day and be like all right i'm done yeah you know like there's there's not optional ways to go and find the keys there's not option there's a couple levels where there's more keys than you actually need like yep. the train that yeah fucking train. we'll get there but uh, <laughs> but for the most part, it, it's a pretty straightforward. It's, it's a, I don't know, it's an NES game, and I just I'm genuinely shocked that it, people talk about it being as tough as as it's talked about. Because I'm like, I don't think this has anything on like Castlevania or, you know, like Com it's, it's completely not, agree. You know, it's 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 I don't I think it's fair. I think it's tough but fair. The only the only thing that's a little bit cheap about it is the occasional respawning enemies, like those fucking pollen seeds that are just keep <laughs> falling from the fucking. 
Yeah. Yeah. This is one that if you, if you want, if you want to get into a game that everyone thinks is hard, but it's not really as tough as it is play this one and, and it'll boost, may boost your resume a little bit. Yeah. Every time you play it, you'll figure out one more level. And then after three or four sessions, you'll be like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I will say to it's to be fair. Uh, I can't, I, as of this recording, I can't beat it. I can get right to the end segment, yeah. but yeah. there's a, it does have a pretty nasty difficulty spike at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like talking about levels, like the first level is it's really not, it's really not too tough. Um, it's mostly again, exploration, finding where those six keys are. I think there's also another spike in level two, another difficulty spike in level two. Oh, um, oh, I, sorry. as a kid, as a kid, like I kind of got stuck there. Right. On the note of level two though, one thing I like about this game as well is that, uh, not every level, but in some levels, when you first start the level, a character will come up and talk to you and just give you like yeah. some, you know, and like, and usually it's a tip, but if you're not paying attention, you blow through it. And in the second, I think it's the second level, the guy comes up to you right away, the, the character, and they're like, oh, I have a friend who lives at the bottom of the water who wants to talk to you. And yeah. so then you dive into this water, and the first time I played through it, I didn't bother going down to the bottom, and then I couldn't find a key. Then I, the next time I played it, I heard what he said, and I was like, oh. So then I swam down to the bottom of the water, and then there is a creature living down there, and then that creature tells you that you need the lizard who's up at the top of a tree. And then you yeah. realize once you get on the gorilla, you can climb the tree up to the – and it's it really well done because just minorly hidden things, but yes. you need to listen to what that character at the front is saying to figure out where they are. I, I liked yep. that. That was well done. Yeah, yeah. You the first time you just jump right through that water and get out of there, and then – when once you know that you need to go down there for that second hint, you see the bottom of the water that's open and you can swim down to that. And that brings yeah. you yeah, to another screen. So yeah, that really was well done. And then once you know, you don't have to go back there again, but, but now one thing too is, is with that second level. And you mentioned this yeah. earlier, the, the background isn't black. It's like purple. Like they've drawn like mountains or something back there. Yeah, and yeah. it looks nice. I think it actually looks really sharp, but yeah. boy, you do see the game the game chugs a little bit. Whereas oh, when it's yeah. against that solid black background, it is silky smooth. Yep. Um, yep. It, it, it has a little bit of a tough time. Again, very comparable to Mega Man three, where yeah. there's a lot of slowdown, like top man staves, that type of stuff where it chugs along when there's a lot of sprites and the, the sprites in this game, they're big. They look good. They're detailed. And when you have so many fucking enemies on the screen, it, it does make it slow down. a little. Yeah. Bit. She, she chugs at times. She chugs. So anyway, yeah. sorry. So yeah, so the first level you're in like that forest with the mushrooms. It's pretty easy. The second level, I once I listened to what that guy had to say, I didn't find the second level too bad. Yeah. But you do need to read what he has to say. Otherwise, you'd never realize go to the bottom of the water, then get on a gorilla and climb to the top of the tree. But it's also those things that like once you know that they're there, then your second run through is so much faster because you don't have to talk yes. to anybody. Yeah. So uh so that's yeah, and then oh the third level is that fucking train. Oh, I, I, so it's, it's tough. So that's an auto scroll and yeah. that is a cool way to do an auto scroll though, that you're getting yeah. on, yeah. Uh, you're getting on the train, getting on the toy train and the, I think it's called the house of toys and you're basically going across this train from one part of the level to the other part of the level. And there's all sorts of the planes. Now I think the planes are pretty consistent with where they show up and, and which ones dive bomb you and which ones don't. But the thing that always gets me, and I have not beaten this game yet without dying, and most of the time it's my deathless run ends very early because sometimes those grenades that those balloons drop, they like they're either they drop earlier or they drop late. You don't know when they're coming. I think it's totally RNG. Yeah. And it, I agree. it's tough that's frustrated the shit out of me. Those fucking hot air balloons or whatever they are that drop yes. the bombs on you. And it's like, you're right. There's just, I, same thing for me. I found my best strategy with them is to just balls to the wall and try to get past them as quick as possible. Yeah. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to when they're going to fucking drop. And it, it can be goddamn. And, and again, you're on this auto scrolling train. You have three hits and then you're dead. And my big beef with that train level is that there's no, you don't get to turn into any animals. It's yep. literally just trying to stay alive on this train and avoid everything that's coming at you. Yeah. And uh, I just, yeah, I, I I will agree that it's a cool way to do an auto-scrolling level, but yep. it's just like, we just spent the first two levels loving how we get to turn into all these funky animals and do all these crazy things. And now you've just decided like, ah, fuck you, just ride on this yeah. train. Yeah, a, 
a little yeah. schizophrenic for sure. But at the same time, it does add some variety. And yeah, it does. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, okay with it. it it's I still tough, think though. They, yeah, I still feel like they could have snuck at least one animal in there. I don't know what animal is on a train, but something. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. I, at that level fucking infuriates me. A Definitely not the mouse. No. Well, hey, there's Fuck lots of mouse. mice on train. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, that train level, I know some people wrote in saying they didn't care for the train level. And I will say, uh, outside of the last level of the game, uh, it is probably my least favorite level as well. Yeah, I would agree. So it just feels so half-assed. Like, I, I don't know. It doesn't matter anyways. Uh, Puck, what's that? You have this all written. You're on the ball. What's after the train? I literally night, just played this like an hour ago. Yeah, it's the night sea. Oh yeah, the, the one where you go water underwater. Level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I traditionally despise swimming levels. As far as yeah. swimming levels go, not too bad. No, it's not. Uh, and the fact that they give you a couple power ups down there too that that is helpful. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't the, mind that one. The only frustrating thing about the swimming level is uh, there there are and you mentioned it. There's there's instances where you run into those fucking auto death spikes. Yeah. And and they so, can be dude, they are the hitboxes on those things are are they're they're not they're not tight. Like they're yeah. oh you came pretty close to our spikes. Fuck you. Yeah, not they forgiving at all. You. Yeah. So with that level, the one thing that again, this is like one of those didn't have enough time, I don't know, but there's one spot where there's a key, and I don't know if you got stuck here, but there's a key that you can only get to it by going into basically what's like a hidden cave at the end of a dead end. Yeah. And there's no visual indicator that this is like some kind of a cave that's going to bring you to one spot. So I pass that by, I don't know how many times without, I'm like, well, that's a dead end. Why am I going to go that way? Then finally I swung to the end of that and it brought me to another area where then yes. I can find the key. That pisses me off so much. Just put a fucking cave entrance there. To yeah. Let me know I'm supposed to go in. Yeah. That same thing did happen to me. Cause it literally just looks like you're swimming into a dead end and I was missing one yeah. key. And then same, I eventually just swum into this dead end. Cause I was like, well, I don't like at this point I'm, uh, you know, I, I can't leave a stone unturned. I got to look. Yep. And then, yeah, you swim into this dead end, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, by the way, you just somehow went into a cave, and now you're in a new area. It's and like they're like, hiding gonna... where you're – it's like one thing if you're going to put a one up there or something, but it's like you're hiding where I'm supposed to go. It's... Yeah, and it – like you couldn't have fucking pulled a couple of dollars from your swimming useless boxing glove budget to yeah. animate a fucking cave entrance <laughs> or something because, yeah, that, that pissed me off too. Other yeah. than that, I don't hate that level. I like the very beginning – when you're at like the crashed pirate ship and you're the hermit crabs and you're digging underneath, I thought that was actually yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Yep. But but fuck that cave. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Fuck. Fucking cave. Yeah. Okay. Then then it's my favorite level. Nemo's house. I oh, love I, I oh. love that level. I I think I think my disdain for that level is just because I did get stuck there. Cause that that is like you're in Nemo's house and it is a big level. You need to like go yep. down into the basement to get one animal that turns into another animal to get up to the attic, to get a different animal. And it's, there's a lot, it feels like a big over overwhelming level. And then you realize like there is one particular path through it. That's the only way through it. Yeah. There's um, a, and there's a couple keys too, that are hidden like in the very upper corners of the yeah. level. Yeah. So it's really easy. There's one in the upper left-hand corner that, when you first get the frog, if you jump up, you see it. But if you don't jump right away, you don't see that key. And you can go down the basement, go do everything else. And then you're missing this one key that is all the way back at the beginning of the level. So I yeah. can see that. I can see that like really being infuriating because it's a big level. And once you get to the end and you don't have a key, you have to look everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And what, well, and what I found annoying about that level was uh, it, it kills me a couple of times. Because yeah. there's a lot of enemies in that level. Those fucking monkeys that throw the plates can go fuck themselves. Uh, but the problem is that when you die, you most of the levels when you die, it's really not the end of the world because the levels aren't all that all that long. But in this one, when you die, even if you were like right near the end and you maybe needed one more key, or you have all the keys and you just need to get out. When you die, you need to redo the whole thing. Yeah. Which is go up and get the frog. Use the frog to go down to the basement. Go down to the basement and get the lizard who will carry you up to the bee. Then fly up to the attic with the bee to get the mouse to go across the attic to drop down to the next bug. And it's just a lot of steps that yeah. when you've done everything and there's nothing left to collect, you just need to execute it. It can that that got under my skin a little bit. Yeah, hard. but again, I thought they did such a great job of like you're a kid 
in this house and that idea of like being really small in the big house and like exploring every little area of it and yeah. a lot of detail that they put with different backgrounds like the wood background and then the stone backgrounds and then you're in the basement in the attic i just thought it was very creative and a lot of a, feels like the most care went into that level in particular I'll I'll get on board with that. Definitely the deepest level of the game. Yeah, yeah. I, that I agree with. And I, and again, like, I don't know. I feel like it's a stupid criticism when my criticism is that I died and now I have to do the level again. And it's yeah. like, well, what the fuck did you think was going to happen? You handheld yeah. bitch. Like, of course that's part of the game. Well, and some of the stuff is tough. Like, it's really easy to die like two thirds of the way through when you have the mouse and you're trekking back across and you have those birds dropping those eyeballs on you or whatever it is. Yes, yes. Um, and because the hitbox of the mallet sucks. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, dude. I died up there three or four times until I finally realized that I think the play is to just ignore the birds flying over your head and just mallet the eyeball you know, egg things they're dropping and just you know don't why, touch them. And you know why you died? Because of the hitbox? Because I was because on the mouse. the mouse. Because the yeah. mouse sucks. No, the mouse doesn't <laughs> suck. I suck. I I I will hold I will I'll face the blame for this mouse. This isn't on you. I'm terrible. But I yes, I that I agree with that. I found that 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 fucking those guys that was fucking guy. And then and then yeah. dude, and then trying to break those fucking bricks. Oh, like, it's oh terrible. My God. I don't if you've terrible. never played it, there's just these like breakable walls, and it's so obvious. Now you need to ride the mouse up to these breakable walls and then break the walls and get it's so obvious. But fuck me, is it hard to do? Yeah. Oh my fucking god. Yep. Yeah. And there's no pressure. There's no time. There's no it's a good thing they don't have enemies there. If there were enemies there, that, yeah. that might be that might be rage quit time for yeah. for several people. Um, so they give you the time to do it, but yeah, it's a little it's a little bit annoying. Yeah. It is it is but, a fun level to explore though. Like and you do yeah you genuinely feel this like sense of accomplishment when you realize like there's no animal is dead weight. It's just a matter of figuring out what do I do with this animal? What do I do with yeah. this animal? It's, it's a pretty cool design level. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll agree. I'll agree. Sorry about that. Everybody quick hiccup on the old technology there. So the house, the house heard us talking shit about it. Uh, the house is fine. And then uh, we're getting toward the end of the game. It's only like eight levels, yeah. I think. Yep. So after the house is the, is that uh, the cloud land? Yes. Cloud ruins. Yep. That level that's another one that it like you're, you're going across rooftops to start, you get the B early and then it becomes an auto scrolling level where you're going up into the sky and yeah. you need to land on clouds because the B only has seven or eight flaps of his wings before he's out of gas. And if you fall through the bottom of the screen, you die. So you need to be going from cloud to cloud, trying to platform your way up. And I will say as a platforming junkie, this is actually my favorite level in the game. Yeah. I, I, I thought they did that really well. Um, and again, a little bit of a different gameplay from other spots where now, you know, it's an auto scroll. I, the, where they put the clouds, there's a lot of risk reward there. You can stop at every one. You later on realize you don't need to stop at every one, but if you stop at every one, you risk falling behind and not getting to the end. So, but if you push it too far, the B has the chance to not make it too. So I, I thought yeah. they did that really well. And and the and the the timing like when you land on one of those clouds you literally it's very precise like you land on that cloud and the second your feet touch that cloud you need to take off again because the level yeah. will bury you and so it uh, that was one that was actually surprisingly precise platforming and I I really enjoyed it the only thing about that level that felt off was that the keys aren't hidden you get to the end of the level and then all the keys are just sitting there right and but I I wonder if I, that was from play testing and they realized it was just too hard to make you collect keys while doing the platforming yeah and it's like it, it doesn't want to soft lock you right like you don't want to get to the end and have no way to get back to the beginning and I think with those auto scrolls there's no way for you to go back and try to find other other keys so it a, a good idea to do the auto scroll but you sacrifice that where your whole idea of like collecting these keys no longer matters yeah. and so again a little little piecemeal with that um but it, it, it's definitely a fun level yeah i i quite enjoy that level it, it is tough dude. that one killed me like I, i'm pretty good at it now but that's one of those ones that like i mean it's a stupid comparison but like almost got a hint of celeste to it and i know it's game came out 30 yeah. years before celeste yep. but it's like you are going to die a few times at this one while you practice this like this yeah. is you have to figure out this one's gonna fuck you up a bit and i i enjoyed that yeah yeah Big fan. And then it's the upside down house, right? Yeah. Yeah. That level. Eh. It's kind of, yeah. Same. 
it's, it's tedious. It's tedious, and it's like, all right, can we just get to the end now? That's yeah. That's, that's kind of where I was with it. Yeah, like because there's really no. I didn't find that one. Like I don't find it particularly hard to solve. It's just a matter of like not not fucking up step by step by step. But I didn't find it to be a particularly. I really didn't find it to be that hard of level. Like not yeah. complaining because I'm a pussy and I don't like hard things, but like I really didn't find it to be that hard of level. Yeah, I think I think when you kind of learn in Nemo's house that you have to search every every area and there's a key at the beginning you can miss. I actually missed it the other day when I was playing through. And then it is a long trek back, but overall it's it's not too tough. No. And Except then for uh breaking those blocks again with the mouse. Yeah, those fucking blocks. <laughs> uh and then and then all of a sudden we get like a story. Oh my gosh, yeah. And that story, dude, those cutscenes where the girl like shows up and explains like we need you to go save my dad from this bad guy and save the king of Slumberland or whatever the fuck and Yeah. Uh she's like here's a magic wand and we'll power it up and now you've got a way to attack <laughs> enemies and I'm like where the fuck were you 6 levels ago or 8 levels well, ago or whatever the fuck. And it looks like it's sitting in his backpack the entire time. Like I wonder how different the game would be if they gave you that early and they gave you some kind of offensive attack and then Maybe now when you talk to her, she powers it up so then it can fire the projectile. But like, yeah. I just, I feel like you should almost have that at the beginning of the game. That yeah. Would, that would make it a little bit more fun to play. You don't yeah, have I to don't just know. dodge everything. And and thank you. Cause I was like, I'm looking at his Sprite and I'm trying to figure out like what's, cause he's just like a kid in his pajamas. Yeah. And I'm like, what is by his head? Is that like a hoodie or is yeah. that? Cause it looks like the wand. And I think yep. it is. And the I, wand just doesn't work until she powers it up at the end of the fucking game. Yeah. So, and I love too, like, again, like the story, you, you play through these seven levels and you make it to her. And then once you're there, she's like, oh yeah, that clown that we saw earlier, like, uh, he was just here. Um, he was just there to get you to come here because my dad's actually been kidnapped and Nemo's just like, I don't think I can do that. I'm just a little kid. Like I can't. I can't save a, a king. Yeah, and yeah. she's like, "Oh, I have this Morning Star that you that will help you defeat him." And he's like, "Well, I don't know how the hell to use that. Like, what am I supposed to do? Who do you think I am?" And she's like, "Don't worry, it's the land of dreams. I'll cast a spell on it so you can use it." Fuck, man. It, Fucking <laughs> useless. God. And damn. I don't know if this lines up with the movie, but like, it's it's definitely ridiculous. Yeah, it is. All of a sudden, at the end of the game, hey kid, who's only has your only weapon has been a bag of candy. Here's yeah. a fucking magic wand that'll kill everything. And yeah, then you get to this better than like poking holes in NES storylines. I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> and then you get to the, the final level. There's no keys to collect. You just have to fight some bosses and use the wand to like attack them. It's, it shoots like projectiles at like a 45 degree angle toward the sky in front of you. Yeah. And I don't find the first half of this level too hard. You hop on the lizard and you dodge some fire and some spikes yeah, and yeah. you fight a weird penguin that sends his babies after you. Yeah, to um, get slaughtered. Yep. Yeah, and I really like that whole part. I don't like. I beat it on like my second try. I didn't find that that bad at all. Yeah. But but then it sends you into what I presume are like the depths of hell. Yeah. And th everything is like dark purple rocks, and there's fire shooting out of everywhere. Yeah. And I I to this moment have not beaten that part. Yeah. Uh, so I it, can't speak to how it ends. Yeah, it's definitely difficult. Um. There's like a spot where you got to jump across with a lizard and get a frog. And there's all this fire coming at you from above, which earlier on, I guess you're supposed to learn that when you're in, when you're on the lizard, that you can kind of duck into those like one unit spaces. And yeah. that allows you to get underneath the fire, even though the, even though the fire is definitely touching the top of Nemo's head, apparently it doesn't hurt you. No, because so, lizards are fireproof. You know, apparently. That. Yeah. You um, know. So that makes that that makes that part really difficult, and then you have to do the whole thing again with the frog. Which, that's that's where it gets me. Is because yeah. while you're trying to climb up this fucking area and not get touched by the fire, where you only have three hits and then you die, yeah. uh, the fucking these stupid. I don't the know what they are. They look, like, they look like you know when you blow like a dead dandelion and all the seeds yeah. fly everywhere. That's yeah. what they are, but they have a sinister laughing face on them. And they just yeah. keep falling from the sky and eventually they stop over you and come straight down at you yeah. and avoiding them. It's some where the problem is I get up there with the lizard. I jump to the part where the frog is and yeah. then you have to leave the lizard to feed the frog candy. And by the time I get candy in the frog's mouth, those dandelion things have fallen from the sky and killed me. Yeah. So like you can bait the, there's like one you got to bait at the top. Like before you jump, you have to wait for one. 
You wait oh, for him, yeah, you yeah. bait him down, and then you can make the jump and then be free of him. But Fuck. yeah, it's tough. And then you do that whole thing. You do that whole thing again with the frog, which is way more difficult because the frog won't move left to right. So getting through the fire is almost impossible. Yeah, because he has to like jump through the fucking fire. But when you jump, you hit the fire and fuck. Yes. Yeah. And then I, I presume once you get through there, then you have to fight the final boss, the Nightmare King or whatever. So is. there's like there's like two actually two more bosses. So the next boss is like a stingray, which this thing is definitely difficult. Like the penguin's pretty easy. Um the stingray is really difficult because the thing starts flying across the screen extremely fast and it's really tough to dodge him. You basically have to stay like right at the middle of the screen. And if he's coming at you, you can move either way, but it's totally RNG. Like there's no way to manipulate him to one side or the other. And then once he's done, he'll stop and then start throwing fire at you. That's when you can fire your projectile at him. Um, not a bullet sponge like the last boss, but it's, it's not an easy fight. I think overall, like the second part of that level, the second part of nightmare land is, is the toughest part of the game. Okay. Yeah. I, well, I fuck. I mean, I yeah. can't, it's the only part of the game I can't fucking beat. So you're not going to get any goddamn argument from me. Fuck those goddamn dandelion fucking things. Yeah. Fuck. So then, so then there's one more part to it. Again, it's kind of like a Wiley level where you have like these three areas of it. Um, so the, the last one's like a little bit of a final exam where, you have to get a lizard. Same thing like with the last one. You get a lizard, then you go up to get a bee, and then the bee gets you to go to the last animal of the game, which, of course, is that fucking mouse. Yeah, um, you you cl And then you climb, like, the final cliff. And it's really cool, actually, when you climb that cliff because you know you're getting to the end because right. now the Nightmare King is, like, looking over you as you're going across, like, these last fire pits, which is not tough. And then, uh, and then you get to the final boss. That's cool. Which and is then, the Nightmare King. So then, spoilers, when you yeah. beat it, like, does he wake up? So once you beat it, then you, uh, you get the, the you rescue the king. You have a conversation with the king. He's going to make you a prince and return you back to your home. And then the game basically ends with mom telling you to wake up. And it's it's very like Mario 2, the ending, wow. where he's like looking out the window um, and it's like, was this all a dream or was yeah. it not? I mean, you presume it was, but. I mean, it seemed obvious that it was going to be like, you know, these yeah. were all dreams and everything because it's literally the name of the fucking game. Yeah. But I was just curious if there was going to be like some twist where it was like, oh, no, this was real life and real life is a dream and this is all a simulation yeah. and. I mean, I, oh. I think I think it leaves a little to interpretation there. So, all right, I like it. It's pretty deep for a kids' game. It's pretty deep for sure. Um, good game, man. I I have to say, like, I again, I'm not, I'm not. It's not a dig, but like, you have been on me to do this game for the better part of half a decade, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and I finally have played it, and I've played it pretty pretty uh, religiously now for a few weeks, and yeah. uh, I'm pretty yeah. So it's fucking like, is it my favorite platformer on the NES? No. But it's a rock solid little platformer. I wish it was on somewhere. Like I wish it wasn't I know. dead. You know. Yep. Yeah. This and should I, totally be on the the NSO to play. Like yeah. I, I don't understand why it's not other than maybe Capcom because I think Little Nemo. I think all of that is like public domain because of how early that comic strip comic strip was. Oh. So I don't think this is actually even licensed because I don't think it needs to be. Right. Because I think all of that, all of that now is public domain and anybody can do whatever they want with it. Right. There's actually like two, I don't know if I want to say remakes or sequels, but there's two little Nemo games that have been in development for quite a while. I played one of them at a convention a couple of years ago and it looked awesome, but it didn't play nearly as, as fun right. as the original. It's just like, I hate that more and more frequently now on this show, we're talking about how I wish these games are more available. Some like, it's just, yeah, you know, and this is where I'm like, I've never hidden it. This is where I support emulation. I'm like, yo, if a game's not available somewhere, and then fucking go get it. Like, fuck yeah. That. But you if know, you like, are a collector, if you are a collector, this one is it's pretty it's pretty cheap. Yeah, um, I, I, I think, think I got it for twenty bucks. It wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I and it's worth it. The, it's worth twenty bucks. It's a good little. It game. definitely is. Yeah. yeah. So if you have the original hardware, I think it's it's worth seeking out. And if you don't have the original hardware and can find a way to play it. I think it's it's worth playing. Yeah, I'll throw an endorsement on it. I, once I get good enough to beat it, I think I'm going to put up an Adam Sucks at Video Games of it. 
Uh, nice. This is a good little game. Uh, we need to score this thing. And I always like to offer up the opportunity. Have you got any ideas, Andrew? I mean, I feel like you need 43 keys in the game. Oh, So I think that's, that's pretty, a good scale. That's a little too clever for this show. That's a good scale. All right. Uh, then the floor is yours, my friend. You have waited five years for this fucking moment. What would, how many keys would you give Little Nemo the Dream Master? I mean, I got to give it 43. No, I'm not going to give it 43. Um, I'm going to give it 38 out of 43 and that that might be might be a touch high but it loses a little bit because it's it's not actually all that replayable because um even though again it feels open it's it's not quite an open game um and there's just those couple little things we talked about like with the hidden path and the night sea and some of the other it's it's got a couple warts but you know overall i think it's i think it's really good it's not a top 25 nes game for me, but it it does. I think it does land in that top fifty. I think it's like around forty range. Yeah. Um really good quality game. Yeah, I I don't disagree with almost any of that. I if I have one criticism of it, it's like you said, it's just there's. I mean, unless you want, and I guess it's certainly not the only NES game that's like this. But unless you want to replay it, it there yeah. it's like you're done. You beat it once, you know how to do it. It's done. I guess I've been playing it for a couple of days fairly like a, you know an hour procession and i'm I'm basically at the end of the game so yeah uh yeah i'll give it like uh i'll give it 34 because i like the whole reversing the numbers thing it's so it's like it's like a seven and a half eight out of ten it's a solid the thing is is like if you're just i think its biggest problem is that by any standards there's nothing it does better than other there's better platformers there yep. are cuter games there are better looking games there's better controlling games it everything it does is done better but it does everything relatively well. Yeah, there's one one thing that I, I got to mention on it. I think the music is really good. Like, oh, I, yeah. I, I, I love the music. Um, again, Ca- Capcom really had it figured out with music. And it while it's not, like, at the level of Mega Man musically either, um, some of the tracks totally belong in, like, a Mega Man game, especially towards the end. Like, they... Like they held back their best music for the very end of the game. The boss fights uh, in Nightmare Land, the Nightmare Land theme in general, and then the final boss fight. Like those are all awesome. And they, a lot of the other music, they use that like, it sounds almost like an old carousel at a carnival, which fits with with the music really well, or fi- yeah. fits with the theme really well all the way through. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I like obviously you all have heard some of the music already and there'll be a little bit more music coming up. The music this game is just like Capcom. I'm telling you, man, like people, people like Capcom for a reason. Capcom makes good shit. Not everything they do is great, but a lot of it is pretty fucking good. And this was in an era where everyone was just shitting out every game they could make to get it on the NES as fast as possible. I think that, I think they did a pretty good job with this one. Yeah. So, uh, good shit, man. Thank you, uh, for, for taking time to do this. And obviously thank you for, (laughs) Thank you for keeping this game on my radar. So Dude, I, have, I, for years. I really appreciate it. I really I, appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. And hope, hope I think we did it justice. And, I do too. Yeah. I, and, it's sad. I, this is the end of a, this is the end of an era here at remember the game. There's no yeah, more. I don't know what to do I, now. I, I know. I got to see what game takes little Nemo. Cause now, <laughs> now there's going to be like 40 people that every week are going to be like, do my game, do my game. Do, and I'm like, That's, maybe you'll break me. Maybe you won't. And you broke yeah. me. So, yeah. uh, Dude, if people want to see more of your shenanigans, where can they do such a thing? Um, so I am on Twitch. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't stream all that often, but I'm at Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash bucklocks27, B-U-C-K-L-O-X. Um, so you can find me there. And I just have one other little PSA, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, um, no. I know a lot of people listening. I know there's a lot of parents that listen to this. Um, I am a teacher. I love my job. I love my career. I have a lot of support. Um, but I will say, if there is a, a teacher that's out there who has made an impact on one of your kids, um, take a couple minutes and just send them an email and let them know that because you definitely will make their day. You might make their week or their year. And um, there's a lot of people out there doing a lot of awesome things. And that that simple thank you goes a long way. And again, you can, you can really make an impact on, on that person that's dedicating a lot to, to your kids. So that's it. I can, 
I can get on board with that. I feel like everybody today, it's so easy to go online and just shit on stuff or tell people they suck yeah. or get mad. Yeah. Or, people never think to go online and send a message when someone does something nice. Yeah. So, so I agree. Yeah. Be nice yeah, to your teachers. Um, so, buddy, great talking to you. Good job. And this episode actually goes live in seven hours. So assuming I didn't fuck anything up, uh, this episode will be live. Andrew's Twitch will be in the description of this podcast, presuming that he sends it to me to put in there in time. And, uh, buddy, thanks. Thanks for doing this. And thanks for all your support over the years. I'm very grateful. You got it, man. Thank you. Right, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Andrew, thank you so much. Uh, not only for giving me a call to talk Little Nemo, but for driving me fucking borderline crazy by asking me to cover it for five plus years and uh, for getting me to finally play it because it really is a fucking good game. I, I quite enjoy I own a physical copy of it now and it's staying right there on my shelf among all my childhood favorites like Bar vs. the Space Mutants and Ninja Turtles and Mega Mans, etc. Uh, this is a really good little game that I hope eventually gets re-released somewhere so a bunch of you can play it because it's pretty fucking solid. Uh, so Andrew, thank you for, your, uh, for, for chatting with me and of course to you kind listener for listening to this stupid show thank you so much for taking a chance on us whether you've been here since day one or maybe this is your first remember the game i appreciate it i implore you to go back into the archives and check out the 300 plus episodes waiting for you there's something in there you'll like and if you do like it maybe leave us a nice review would you i don't know what they accomplished but i'm supposed to ask for them and if you really want to show us some love maybe consider hopping over to the old patreon box patreon.com slash remember the game subscription start at just three dollars a month you get hundreds of bonus podcasts podcasts all ad free you can add them to spotify or most other podcast services so you don't have to use the stupid patreon app because it fucking sucks and uh you help me pay for things that i like like food and my dog's medicine uh we will be back for all our patrons tomorrow with expansion pass 218 as of now i don't know what it's going to be about but that's up to the patrons to decide and uh i'll be in toronto this weekend telling jokes so hopefully you're coming by the show to see me and if not we'll see you next week for a whole nother slab of podcasts and uh also don't forget twitch.tv slash member the game come by and say hi oh and uh we have merch sale 20 percent off till the end of july remember the game podcast.com use promo code molly 300 i'm gonna thank a bunch of you and get the hell out of here thanks for listening everybody and i'll talk to you on the next one cheers so long goodbye Remember the Game is brought to you by our Patreons. I could not puke up all the content I churn out every week without all of your support. The following people are at the Senior Executive Vice President level or higher at patreon.com slash remember the game. And as such, I am contractually obligated to thank you all as quickly as possible. So in alphabetical order, a huge thank you to... Remember the game Hall of Famer Slick Motherfucking Rick. A dude named Adam A.B. Killing Aaron Lawson Ace McGuy. Adam Blank still hasn't reviewed Mario Galaxy. Adam Blank's Evil Twins Doppelganger's Clone. Adam Martinet, Adam's former assistant. A.J. McCurgy, Alex McIntyre, Alex R., Alex Ramos, Alexander Camps, Amazon Cheese Merchant, Andrew Wright, Andy Hudson, Angry Ticks, Archangel Otaku, A Town, Atrio Wormwood, Beaver Boy, Beef Dingleberry, Beers of War, Benjamin Atkins, Big Daddy Randall, Big the Cat, Biddy, Cuz 19, Blame the Hoagie Man, Blobby Rogers, B Money, Brandon DeZeba, Brant Hewitt, Brian Richmond, Bula, Burt Macklin, Cam Nelly 23, Can't Destroy Her, Captain Steve N, Carbon Fiber Zombie, Cesar, Chaz Hammond, Chris Fleury, Chris Hill, There Is No Cake, Christian Gabriel, Christopher Britt, Chugger 22, Coda Blaze, Cody Cody Richardson, Cody Thompson, Combo Chuck, Confused But Still Here, Crystal Lake Management, Dazareth, Dan Fuselman, Dan of Dissect That Film, Daniel Darbles, Dar Skywalter, Dave McGee, Dave Thompson, David Schroeder, DBXJ, Decoy Man, Deb Boys on the Roof, Devin Collins, Diablo Spartan, Donnie the Dude, Walter, Doogie, Doug Dorn, Drugs Bad MK, Earl, Elephant Cavs, Elijah Burns, E Man Trucker, Eric James, Eric Hopewell, Esteban Navarro, Fallen Snow Kiku, Fantasy Final, Fantasy Final, Fantasy Final, Faded Sufferance, Fill Up My Farts with Mouth. Ew. Flitty123, Frosty Bear, Frosty Feet 492, Fuzzy99, General Fury, G9PSX, Gabe, Glue Scappin, Gonzo for Sheriff, Graham Kennedy, Guy Who Does Things, Hega Waffle, High Plays Drifter, Hitchy Poo, Holmes, I Cancel My Netflix to Afford the Shoutout, Itchy Nutsru, Isaias, Jake Carter, Jameer Williams, James Clark, James or Francesco, Jeff Bergeron, Jimothy, Jay Callahan, Jay Nasty 15, Joe Buck, Joe the Sandman, John M. Watkins, John Woodruff, Johnny from Virginia, John of the Adult Children Podcast, Jurist Dr. Mario, just 
the fish just call me bob just car pranks justin blair there's a voice crack k Yatch, kevin monroe kia pup laces out dan leo 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 leroy westrich little body fufu 89 liquor like luigi lord long rob von huge and dom the second lotus lucas shaman Lucas Valadez, Madam Nudsich, Makeshift Mellow Magic Money, Marcus Mendoza, Mark Sneed, Ma Babinu, Matt Zeus, Maverick Marty, Max Lagru, Max Sainton, Mellow Yellow 8787, Mercury 869, Mike Maloney, Mr. Jabroni, Mizuru, Monstrous D. Boner, Morgan, Musty Beetle, My Left Nut, Nathan Tremblay, Herdy, Nerdy Hybrid, Nick Creature, No One Cares, Nothing Can Possibly Go Wrong, Roku Saki's Gardener, Phil Lencher, Fill Up My Mouth With Farts, Plow King, Postman, Put It In H, Quiet Place Queen, Radioactive Man, Randy Barrage, Rated X, Ulint, Robbie Air, Roger Staubach's Pool Cleaner, Rush's Dog Walker, Ryan Kinchin, Ryan Perry, Ryan Stemmerding, Ryan Whitcomb, S. Sabin, Sam Carpenter, Savage Boosh, Scary Terry, Scott Brooks, Scotty McGee, Shank the Rat Face, Bastard, Shoeboxer, Sharonic, Sire of Sarah, Sleeper Hit, Sour Goat Face, Squeak Nuts, Squints, Standard Ass Brian, Steve Dalk, Stud Steel Smash, Super Cyan, Sephiroth, Se Super Jess, T Bear 87, Tadpole, Tazzlehoff, Ted Explosion, The Big Deal, The Keegs, The Fletchman, Theodore, The Supreme, Chosarizo, Thomas Childs, Thomas Edward Houlihan III, Thomas Smith, Timmy the Exuberant Turtle, T Timothy Sabrinsky, Titan 420, Toby O.P., Travis Sanders, Triple, Tyler, Tyler Bauer, VOS Rager, Works For Me, Wilco, Wimp 15, Wolfgang Darren, Wolf Magic 21, Why the Surgeon Who's Not a Surgeon Row, X Maverick X, Yes It's True, This Man Has No Dick, Youngster TK, Zach Shepard, Zamatos, Zane Donovan, Zonko 504, <sighs> and Z Train 22. That's a fucking rock solid batch of shout outs right there. All right, guys, I'm going to go watch game seven of the Stanley Cup finals. I hope you all enjoyed it. By the time this went out, it's already over. Thank you so much for the support, and I will talk to y'all in the next one. Cheers. So long. Goodbye. <laughs>